All right, let's get started. I want to welcome everybody to the family. We've got a lot of new people here, a lot of new students. I'm very excited. But I want to, I want to tell you a little bit about myself and a little bit about a story before we move forward. A lot of you know that Heidi and I like to go to the beach every summer. We stay out there a few months at a time. And uh, some of you that are in Florida know the area know that we had a monster storm in July about, I don't know, about two weeks ago. And uh, we were held up in the, uh, the condo for, I don't know, two, three days. Wind was blowing 30, 40 miles an hour. We were stuck in there. I was going a little stir-crazy. Internet was down. And uh, finally, you know, the storm dried up. Sun broke. And I ran downstairs. As soon as I could get out of that place, I was going stir-crazy. And I went on the beach. And uh, there was a lot of devastation. There was a lot of sailboats turned over, catamarans, jet skis toppled over on the trailer. All the lawn furniture was gone. And when I got to the shoreline, I looked both directions, to the left and to the right. And to my amazement, there had to be, I don't know, 10 million, 1,000, I don't know the number. It was insane. Starfish laying on the beach. And they were just everywhere. I mean, I was standing there around my ankles. And, you know, Heidi was dragging the baby behind me. And uh, I bent over, started picking them up, started throwing them back. I picked up one, I tossed it. Picked up another one, tried to skip it, threw it in there, you know, like you skip a rock. Grabbed another one, skipped him in there. I just started throwing him in as fast as I could. And Heidi came up to me. She finally caught up with Chase. She was a little out of breath, and she goes, what are you doing? It, it, it doesn't matter. Look at this. Look at all these starfish on the beach. And I picked another one up in my hand, and I showed it to her before I tossed it back. And I told her, Heidi, to this one, it matters. And I tossed it back. You guys matter to me. You laid out the money for me, and now I'm here for you. What I want you to do is dismiss all the other crap that you've learned about trading for the next four days. And I want to be here for you. I want you to sip the Kool-Aid and just be, become part of something bigger than yourself. I always say this, and it's the truth. This is the last Forex market training you are ever going to need. But the problem is, if you go outside of this area, this room, this group of traders, to find solace or to find comfort, you are not going to find it. Because people don't know what this group in here knows. People think I am a quack, a nut job, a, a sicko, a, a psycho, whatever. They don't believe that what I say to be true. The fact that you join this group proves to me that you know that I'm not crazy, that maybe I'm on to something. I promise you, subscribe to something bigger than yourself, become part of the family wholeheartedly, and you will have success in this trading business. Okay, so let's get started. All right, this is one that pisses everybody off. No trading this week. I want you to stop trading for a couple of days. Money, when it's on the table, good or bad, clouds your judgment. Especially if you're losing, right? If you're in a negative open float, or if your trades are down, or you're getting stopped out, you're not going to think with a clear head. And if you make too much money, the same thing applies. You're going to be so jacked up that you're not going to listen to anything. Just turn the platform off for a few days. The market's going to be there when this class is over, I promise. And just hang on, absorb the knowledge with an open mind, and then be ready to trade at the end of this class going into next Monday. Okay? What I wanted to mention to you is that we're going to do a little something different this class that we haven't done before. I'm going to have Carr, Kim, and Granny on the last night come in and give you the market maker biases going into next week. What that's going to do is after you have the information, you'll have a first-hand idea how to apply it for next week's market. Okay? Some of the points I mentioned, I'm, I'm asking this as a favor. Put aside everything you think you know to be true about the markets. Open your mind to the possibility there is, in fact, something going on here and that we're privy to it. 
allow yourself the opportunity to have success. And something I say in my regular presentation, don't try to mix systems into this. Don't say, oh, Steve, this is great, but I like the slingshot, or I like the rainbow stochastics to add to the bottom of this. It'll really make it great. That stuff is unnecessary. Don't do any of that stuff. Just give me four days, sip the Kool-Aid. I promise you, you'll be happy. All right, this housekeeping slide, usually we don't need to worry about cell phones on vibrate. I'm going to try to break about five to ten minutes every hour, quick bathroom break, grab a Diet Coke, etc. I don't put out a book or a textbook or notes. So I'm going to insist that you write stuff down or go back through the recordings and take advantage of that and take your notes then. Just enjoy the class. Kim mentioned this, but it's important. If you're a retake, don't ask questions about sections that we're not covering yet. Gloria, if you're here, don't ask me about the ADR on day one. Save that for when it's supposed to be presented. If you have questions and you just can't stand it, email them to me or save them for the very end of class during the presentation, all right? Let's not try to interrupt the flow of what's going on. All right, I want you to be courteous to your other students in the forum, in the classroom, and in the live classroom. We all paid to be here. Everybody learns at a different pace. If I get going too fast, don't be ashamed to say, hey, Steve, man, look, you're jacked up on Diet Coke. I can't keep up. Slow it down a little bit. I'll wait up for you guys. All right, I'm here for all of you. That's not some sales or bullshit. The sales part's over. I'm here for you guys. I answer emails. If you're struggling and you're embarrassed to ask me, don't be. You paid to be here. I'm here to get everybody going in the right direction and on the right track. All right, we're going to do some homework. Uh, possibly going to end up posting it in a form, but here's the email address the homework goes to. Steve at MMM4X.com. The guys that are having the most success, girls too, have done all the homework. Some still do homework on the weekends or on a slow night. I know you're saying, ah, shit, I didn't pay this guy all this money to sit here and do homework. I promise you that homework is the key to success in what I'm talking about. If you can't see it in hindsight, you will never see it in real time in foresight. So the idea with the homework is once I illustrate to you how the market makers work the market is to go back and to make sure that you can see the stuff developing, see the levels and see the things that I point out to you in the past. And once you can rapidly identify those things in the previous charts or in history, you should start to recognize their appearance in real time. Everyone should have gotten a glossary. If not, it is in the forum. Keep it handy for the next couple of days. I might say some things that don't sound normal. That's normal for me. Uh, the terminologies are on there. The best thing to do is tonight after class, if you're a little lost, just read over that a couple of times and get familiar with some of the things I say. That's all. All right, that's what it looks like. You should have it. Okay, some people are saying they can't see the slides. We're on the glossary page. If you can hear me but not see slides moving, I'm, everything's working on my end. I'm positive. So log off and log back on, okay? All right, let's get started. We're all here to learn how to beat the market maker and trade in line with him. All right, so to beat this guy or these group of guys, you got to understand their objectives and what they do. Their first objective is to induce traders to take a position. How do they do that? They circular trade, which means they trade between them. They trade from bank to bank, back and forth. They produce wide range swings. The swings create some type of activity in the market, even though there's real no, really no volume behind it. Your account is of no use to him. You making a deposit of FXDD is of no use to the dealer until you click the mouse, until you take a position. So his job is to induce you to click the mouse by showing you something on the chart that gets you to take action. Usually he sets up some type of textbook technical 
that you've read about or a breakout system, some type of behavior to get you to click the mouse. Their second objective is to create panic and fear to get you to think irrationally. Now I talk about the illustration is they spike the market quickly and pull away from those zones which validates the pending orders or gets people going in the wrong way. That quick move or spike or inexplicable price behavior out of nowhere they spike the market on a Friday afternoon right before the close. That creates a panic in you and if you're in a position when they snatch the market away from you that creates a panic, gets you to lift your stop and think irrationally. That irrational behavior ensures that they will margin you out or eventually get you into trouble. And finally, what the business is about from the beginning is the money. So they got to hit the stops and clear the board. And if you lifted your stop, they're going to drag the market in such a way that it forces the majority of the traders into margin issues. Because the bottom line and the most important objective is to pocket your money so they can get their Christmas bonuses. Okay? All right, am I going at a good pace? Okay. In order to beat this guy, you got to know what they're capable of doing. These slides were given to me out of a textbook in the back office in Dubai called the MetaTrader 4 Manager's User Guide. Okay, what? You're saying you didn't know they had a book? Did you think that $4 trillion is floating around without a book or some type of idea on how to beat the traders? Somebody wrote a book on how to take your hard-earned money away. The business is not random. Okay. Market makers can issue you a requote at will. You see the three buttons in the center return, send, confirm, reject. They simply hit the reject button and you are forced to reissue your order. Which in turn the market's moving, you get requoted at the new available price. Keeps you from getting a good fill, getting a good entry. Market makers can trigger all the stops in a range. Left arrow says stop out, check the box. The right arrow, unlimited, across the board. We got X number of contracts in open float. At this price point, we want to hit the stops. They simply add that, hit OK. Notice it's in different languages. They hit it. Done. They got what they need. Market makers can toy with the spreads. You know those robots that work so wonderful in demo that are garbage? This is why. In demo, you get an aggregate of about three feeds, three price feeds. The aggregate of the three feeds is going to be much smoother than what you're really up against on a real account. In demo, since it's not real, they could care less about manipulating the spread, widening the spread to pick up the stops. They don't care. So what happens is you spend $97, which by the way is the refund price point for ClickBank. You spend 97 bucks and buy a robot. Anything over 97 bucks, they got to give you a refund. Anything under, they do not. You own this robot. You put it on an account in demo. It makes $10 million in 25 minutes. You're jacked. You put your hard-earned money in the account. And then guess what? They take that little slider where the arrow is and open the spread on you. You'll pick up your buy side of the order and the sell side or the opposite closing position side will never hit. There's a lawsuit right now, I believe it's with FXCM, that states this exactly. I think Abo sent it to me. 
And if I remember, uh, someone reminds me with an email, I'll post it in the forum. Since it's a private forum, I could say the name, I guess. Can I, Kim? I don't know. The dealer is being sued for having these backside plugins and using these against the traders. Now, I want to say that not all dealers use this. There are some honest dealers out there. Usually the ones that are backed up by banks. Or I know Kim and, and Scott represent good, clean dealers. But what I'm telling you is that this kind of crap goes on. That's why the NFA is trying to regulate this business and clean it up a little bit. Okay, did you ever open up two different platforms and notice that maybe one high of the day is 2355 and another one is 2357? Do you understand that the dealer can hold the price point with this plug-in right here? Here's how. He can set the high, low, and close on a bar based on where the orders are. So if the dealer sees stops at 23.59 or if he sees a bunch of orders at 23.60, he simply types in the high of the bar to go to 23.59. Let's say there's stops at 55. The dealer goes, man, we got stops at 55. Let's hit 59 and clean the board. Remember I told you his third objective is to hit the stops and clean the board? This is how he's capable of doing that. Okay, let's say there's pending orders at 2350 or 2348 on the low side. He doesn't want to activate those orders because he might end up retracing and going back down. He will make the low 2352 and leave the pending sitting there and not absorb those orders because he doesn't want the negative drawdown. Okay? These tools... Give the dealer an edge. And understanding that these are out there switches the edge back in your favor. They know who's in margin trouble. Ever do something stupid and lift your stop and get yourself flashing red and red and black back and forth because you're on the edge of margin? He knows this. He has the whole list of who's in call out trouble. It's on his desktop. There's a trade designed called a straightaway, which I'll discuss here this week, to finish these guys that are on the fence and call them out and take the balance of their account. It's up to you to know the call-out level of your dealer. You guys that are overseas, certain dealers have a 0% margin call. That means they could take every penny from your account. Some have a 25, some have a 50. They could even take the front side margin that you're using to hold your positions open. You need to understand this. Understand that when the traders are in trouble and these margin call levels are on the fence, the dealer will issue a straightaway trade to finish these people off. And that's where the straightaway trade comes in. And that is the only reason it comes in is to take the money from the traders that are on the fence and flashing red in their account. Someone's asked me if I said something about FXCM. Do you work for them? Because if you do, then I won't say it again. Oh, I had to get a sip of Diet Coke there. Market makers manage risk against the open positions. Look at the summary line on the bottom of the slide. Listen, it's a business. They're in business to make money. Send me an email. I'll talk to you about FXCM. They're in business to make money. They're not in business to see you succeed. You're in business to make money as a trader. They're in business to make money as a dealer. That's the way it works. In order to trade the right way, you have to be in line with the dealer, and he's not going to come back for Fred for his one order. They're not going to move the whole market back to get Ben. It's just not going to happen. 
So trading in line with these guys gives you a major edge. This is every plugin I just showed you on the account manager's desktop. Anyone that runs this platform has this. And I'm going to show you a picture of what they're looking at in a minute or what the room looks like. This is what they see. They know everybody in margin trouble. They know the open orders. They know their open positions, how much equity they have as a dealer to work with. Listen, some of you are upset about accounts. Contact Kim and Scott at Compass. They are the IBs for a couple of good dealers. They will get you going in the right direction. All right? Enough said about that. Contact those guys at Compass. That's why they're here, to aid you guys in getting uh, good accounts at clean dealers. Okay. The account manager's desktop. He knows everything that's going on and the accounts that he's managing. You have to understand that this is what you are up against. You guys ever seen this before? It's been floating around. This is one of the rooms at UBS. But UBS is not the only dealer that has a room like this. Each one of those guys is managing their risk, monitoring their equity, and taking a, a looking after the customers. All right, I want you to understand that this is not a game or a hobby. The dealer is lying in wait for you to make an uneducated, emotional decision such as lifting your stop loss or over leveraging your account. If you've been kind of half ass trading the business and treating it like a hobby, I encourage you to take up photography. It's cheaper. But if you are serious and want to trade in line with the dealer and can master the principles I'm going to show you this week, this stuff that I just showed you about the dealers should be irrelevant to you and unimportant if you could identify his behaviors and follow what he's doing. Okay? Okay, so how do we beat these guys? We have to understand where they set up their moves and what's going on. They make some trap moves. Those trap moves start at the beginning of the week, Sunday going into Monday. Edwin, check your... You might have to log in and log back out. Okay, look, a lot of people are saying I'm having problems. Can you, in fact, see how to beat the market maker slide trap moves? Just throw a couple of whys up there. Don't go crazy. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. The trap moves are made at the beginning of the week. Why? They'll jam you up and hold you in open position from Sunday, Monday. The beginning of the day, 5, 6 o'clock, when they set up the channel, the market maker spread, they already have some number of jammed up traders. The beginning of the session, at London Open and US Open, there was a false move to jam up the traders in both sessions and to end the day jamming you up. The end of the session and the end of the week. Friday, they will make an aggressive move and pull back against that move to trap the traders into weekend carry. Okay, I'm trying to keep it a little slower so you can write. So think for a minute. They make the false move at the beginning of the London session. They run the trend. At the end of the London session, they will make one more extension, which is false. Then pull back, go into consolidation for the U.S., and then possibly reverse. End of the session continue with the trend beginning of the session hit that number again don't break it and come back the end of the day four or five o'clock in the afternoon or if they end the trading day at noon which a lot of times they do the price will go back into consolidation 
which is the end of their day and leave you jammed up into the next day. Now think for a minute that I've told you this, that they make these trap moves at those times of day. How many times have you sat there at 1 o'clock in the afternoon all the way into the next night, aggravated that there was no movement in the market? You got jammed up in the consolidation zone and had to sit there until the next night London opened when something started moving again. The beginning and the end of the day is defined as 5 o'clock New York. The end of the day is 5 o'clock New York. It's a 24-hour cycle. I'm going to illustrate it for you in a second here in detail. Understand that the pattern presents on a larger scale throughout the course of the week. Okay, some of you just installed the indicators. I'll give you a brief update on it. These double tracers right here. Let me grab my little ballpoint pen. I'm excited. Okay, these little tracers right here and right here. These two lines. This is Friday. This area is Sunday. This is Monday. This is the beginning of the week. The double black tracer is the beginning of the week. So here you have the week beginning. Market makers make the aggressive move to trap the traders long at the beginning of the week and then pull the market away from those traders. There's your week beginning trap move. In fact, this move just played out in most majors across the board on Monday. They made a triple top high and jammed all the traders and the bottom fell out. My traders caught that move. And I know what happened on, on the, the recent one is they made the high Friday, they came back, hit it again in Asia, and at the London Open stop hunt cycle, they hit it again. So you had a triple top high lined up with the London Open. Yes, look at the majors, Sunday, Monday. Okay. Beginning of the session, right? I said beginning of the week. Sunday, Monday, they'll make a jam move, trap the traders long for the week the beginning of the session. Stop hunt in both directions, which triggers the pending orders. Right? Breakout traders, bracket this. Nice, right there, grab the pendings. They pull back, stops out those breakout traders. They hit them again. They come back, don't allow them to see a profit. Shift the zone off of those traders, game over. You got whipsawed in, uh, long and short in one session. And if you don't have the guts to come back the third time, and a lot of people do not, you're jammed and you miss the trade. Okay? So now, you know when you're looking for the false moves. End of the week. Here's Friday. Right? Here's my double, my double weekend tracer. Friday, Sunday, Monday. Okay? Here's Friday. Before they end the day, they spike the low. Pull back, end the week in consolidation chop. The lower level shorts are jammed for the weekend and got to pay rollover. Right? To add to the beginning of the week, they open with a gap. They didn't used to gap a lot in Forex. A couple of years ago, when people got their butts kicked in equities, They started flocking over here in droves to the Forex market because of the leverage, the ease to trade. You don't have to memorize 150,000 stocks. There's a handful of pairs that you can work with. The Forex market started sounding very appealing to people that lost their pensions. Now, because there's more volume, these guys added a gap to their arsenal against you. So what I'm telling you is, in not so many words, or in too many words, don't carry your trades over from Friday into Sunday, Monday. Not necessary. If I told you they're going to jam you on Friday and leave you trapped, and you caught this M in the U.S. session and you shorted here, and you see the hammer to the low and it pulls back, take your money off and call it a good week.
Okay? End the day in consolidation. End the week off of the high, 25 to 50 pips to jam the traders, depending on the pair, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay? Good stuff. Another Friday example. They went up to the high. Friday, Sunday, Monday. Here's your formation. Here's our entry in our group. This might have been a scratch because you have a big entry bar. We might have had a pass on that. I know Jim Nicholson got in right there, though. Okay. If this bar is too big, this is a pass. This is a no entry. Okay. Now, here's the gap I talked about. This looks like buy the dips in an uptrend, right? So people got jammed up all in here. Friday, they closed. They stuck them because people thought the market would rally at the end of the day, right? Whatever the, whatever the philosophy is. They gapped down, hit the stops that were all in this range right here, and all these guys that were stuck long in here. They gapped them right out, with the, hit their stops. Now, the shitty thing about the dealer that he can do about that is this. If the dealer closes at a price point on Friday and he gaps down 100 pips or 80 pips or 50 pips and opens, if your stop was 5 pips below the candle, he gives you the fill at 45 minus 45. How can he do that? I had an order in minus 5 or minus 7. The answer is... That is the first price available on Sunday at the open. You were filled at the first price that was available at that level. So you thinking you have a nice stop in place and carrying stuff over the weekend is crap. If this has never happened to you, I applaud you. If you thought about carrying trades into the weekend, this is why you do not. You don't know what's going to happen with the economy the way it is. You don't know if they're going to raise the debt ceiling, lower the debt ceiling, fire the president. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if there's going to be some mass exodus in, Euro, in the Eurozone to get out on, from underneath the Euro and there's burning and buildings collapsing over there. You don't know if there's going to be an earthquake. Market makers use that crap as the opening reason to gap the market aggressively against you. It's crap. But it doesn't give you back your lost equity when you hold a trade over Friday. I've seen gaps come all the way back to the low. I've seen sick stuff with the gaps. So what I'm telling you is, and not so many words, is don't carry trades from Friday. Take what's given to you and get out. Okay, now, here's a typical week. This is the structure that you need to memorize to understand the week. Here's what happens. You know I have the small pattern that I draw for you guys, right? The week is comprised of the same pattern. Why, you ask? The answer is because the behavior is the same on the larger time frames. So the market maker's counter to your behavior has to be the same. So what happens is this. Remember I drew this for you? I don't know if you can see that purple. Stop, hunt, high, drop, pull back, right? That's the intraday pattern as I've illustrated for you before. I'll do it again in a minute. Stop, hunt, high, drop. Now on the bigger picture, consolidation, stop, hunt, low, trap lower level shorts, trigger the stops of the weak long holders, run it up, A big fat M, which is a multi-session setup. By the way, the most powerful setup is the multi-session M and W. What is that? I'm going to show you pictures later, but here's one for you right now. The definition of a multi-session M or W is simple. Market makers hit a level. 
they repeat the level in another session or another day. This example here is Wednesday. Market makers made the high of the week, the HOW, the how, right? They came back near the HOW but failed to break it because they had trap volume or pendings at that area that if they come back and repeat the level, the traders are released. Okay, what the hell are you talking about? They release the traders. How many times have you been in a trade and said, if it gets back to break even, I'm getting out? If it gets back to minus five, I'll take my lumps and get on with my life. How many times have you said, if it comes near where I got in, I'll just take what I can get and be happy I didn't blow my account? If you said those things to yourself, you're not alone. This typical M&W behavior is based on that mentality or psychology. The traders that think like that because they don't understand the market put their pending orders in around here to get out at break even. They'll put their take profit at plus one, zero, minus two just to get their money back and be out. When market makers come near the level They don't allow that volume to release, be released back into your accounts. They don't want to release it back into the wild. Think for a minute. If there's $500 million at Wednesday's high or the high of the week, they're not going to break the level. They're going to come near it because, remember I told you they're so greedy, they got to grab whatever money's still there, and then they'll shift away for three days. The market is based on a three-day, three-level cycle. Write this down. The market is based on a three-day, three-level cycle. Market makers will trap lower-level shorts, higher-level longs, and make a unidirectional swing for three days or three levels. If you look at this example that's up there, you have a false move weak beginning, which is a variation on the pattern. Stop hunt high. Coming out of Friday, which if you notice, this is exactly what happened this week. They hit it, hit it again Asia, hit it again London open, bottom fell out. Okay? Now, they then repeated this behavior on a two-day cycle, stop, hunt, low, jam the traders, run. This run was made three levels or two to three days, approximately. The midweek reversal, which there's a midweek reversal almost every single week. You can have multiple levels in one day. Yes, that would make it a two-day cycle. Now, Wednesday, they put in the midweek reversal like clockwork right here. They trap for the high of the week. They repeat the level but fail to break it. The spread opens up to pick up any pending orders on the other side of Wednesday's high or the high of the week. If you notice something, the highs of the week will coordinate with the stop hunt triggers at the beginning of the sessions. Think. This is a stop hunt high trap for London. They repeat the same stop hunt in the U.S. session. Two sessions formed out in the middle of the week at Wednesday after two and a half days of rise at three levels looks like a midweek reversal to me. You then get a unidirectional swing. Unidirectional meaning one direction. A unidirectional swing for three days. My friend David Gian and Bruce from New York would have caught this as a swing trade and maximized their gains looking to exit this trade Friday U.S. session. Why? 
Friday's the last session of the day. We know the low would probably come in between 9 and 10 or 9 and 11 in the morning. At the session changeover, the reversal comes. So we look for the low of the day, London, to look for our exit. We get the spike, a repeat of the level, and into consolidation to end the week. If you are a swing trader, that is your exit. Level 1, level 2, level 3. Three levels of drop, spike the low, end the consolidation. Lights out, a couple hundred pips in your pocket. The pattern that I'm going to draw for you and illustrate for you is observed intraday, intra-session, and intra-week. It also plays out on the dailies and the four-hour chart. But for our purposes here, we're looking for intraday swings and spot trades only. This information will help you in your larger term charts and any other market. That stuff can be traded. Okay. Here's a typical weekly market structure, as I've just discussed it with you, but illustrated again on a different chart. False move week beginning. Spike the low, spike the high into consolidation. Accumulate and evaluate. Market makers accumulate and evaluate. I hit the high, hit the low, picked up some pennies, what do I got? I, I spiked high again, what do I got? I spiked low, what do I got? Accumulate and evaluate. Steve, what are they evaluating? How good of a trader I am? No. They're evaluating the contracts and the money. How it's straddled over their spread. That's all it's about. The business is about the money. Now, you have a false move, spike the low. The V3 is vector three candles. I'll talk about that in a minute. There's the big fat W formation. Spike the low, pull back, hit it, hit it again, jam up the traders, validate the short sellers. Averages are open. This is a down cycle in any other textbook except mine. Straight rise into consolidation. Stop, hunt, low, rise. Next night, stop, hunt, low, rise. Next night, grab some pendings. Stop, hunt, low, rise. Rise big. 33 trade. Another trade we're going to talk about. A 33 trade is a setup. I'll lay the rules out for you. On day three of the third level, you have an intraday three level rise. That trade will absolutely lead to a reversal. Think about from the market maker perspective for a minute. Every time a retail trader buys, a market maker must in fact sell to him to provide the liquidity. They are not pairing you up, Lou, in New York with Abo in New Jersey. They're not doing that. They're managing their risk by offsetting that by taking some buys and some sells to manage their risk. But they are not going, oh, let's see, Lou wants to go long. Let me find Pete in Southern California. Looks like he's a seller. Let's match those two guys up and let them hold hands and go against each other. That's not what's going on here. That is a marketing ploy, and it is pure bullshit. Excuse my French. The dealer... The reason you get filled so quickly, the dealer takes the other side of the trade. He has some shorts and some buys. That's just the way it is. The short sellers offset his open long equity. The long holders offset his short equity. It balances. Thanks, Russ. Forgot what language it was. Okay, so now... Keep in mind, the three-day cycle. 
day one, day two, day three. You have three levels of intraday rise after the stop hunt. The reversal is imminent. I just was talking to you about market makers equity. He's not unlimited. Here's what he does. You're a retail trader. You buy. I sell to you. Day two. You buy again. I sell to you again. Day three. You buy. I sell to you again. I look at my books. I'm like, eh, I'm getting a little low on equity. I need to get some back. Your net long as a trader or as a collective group of traders, market makers are net short. How do you get paid on net short? Correct the market to get your money back. On aggregate, at level three, market makers go the heaviest. On the retracement, market makers are rewarded and pocket their money. And the cycle repeats. Okay, so now look at the week. False move week beginning, trap to traders. Evaluate. What do we got? You know what? The averages are showing down. We got some traders trapped long. We're net long right now. Let's make the false move induce everybody to go short. What is perceived in the marketplace from retail traders as momentum is actually and has always been the move by the dealer to trigger the stops. When you see an aggressive move quickly and fast like that, that is a move to trigger the stops. It is done on less volume And it gets the traders. Look at think. Look at this from a technical standpoint. Cover this whole. Cover that. This is what you have in front of you. You have an aggressive vector three or three candle aggressive move down momentum breakout. Traders might have been rewarded on this deal because it's a hundred pip drop. The averages are open and cross down. That's a technical short. Everybody fell for this. Market makers applied the breaks. Lower level short holders snatched it away. Went into consolidation in here. That consolidation at the lower level builds short contracts from the amateurs that sell the rises in a downtrend, sell the rallies in a downtrend. That's how the textbook goes. That move, selling the rises in a downtrend, jams up the majority of retail traders short. Now, remember I told you there's a trade designed to get everybody in margin trouble and to keep them jammed. That is called a straightaway and it comes out of level one. It is right here on the chart. Okay, See the marking? It's right here. Here's what happens. You sell the rallies in a downtrend. You sell the bounces off the moving average, right? not understanding the cycle. These are short move continuations for retail traders. Short move continuation for retail traders in here. They have some number of people in margin trouble right there in some number tracked. Those traders are now stuck. Market makers are counting on you to make an irrational decision. The irrational decision being lift your stop, scale in the wrong way to a contract, add orders to it, average down, average up, average sideways, whatever the hell you want to call it. They're counting on this. They then, at the beginning of the Asian session, shift the zone away from those traders quickly. See it? Four straight rise green bar. They then go back into consolidation to accumulate more short selling. They push down, but they don't go past all these levels. They don't go past the levels because it releases the short traders that want to get out with plus one, plus five, plus ten, and get their money back that have been down all night. What's anticipated at a level one after an aggressive W formation is a straight rise. This is the day that most of the breakout traders will get rewarded 
This example, they threw a small stop onto the low and, and stopped out the short pendings. But the long pending side was rewarded. And if you notice, when they come out at London, it's a monster move, straight green candles right out of the box. Why? The aggressive behavior gets everybody into a panic that is net short. Or in a short position with multiple orders or big contracts or whatever you're trading. That aggressive move, pulling away from the low of the week, pulling away from the low of the week jams all this volume in here. And jams them up. Some people are asking what DNC is. It's a new term. It's just simply what I say, and I wanted to remind myself of that. Thank you, Whitney. Do not counter trend trade coming out of level one. Do not counter. Countering coming out of level one will jam you up because we expect straight rise because market makers got to get those contracts and hit the triggers of the of the people that are stuck don't counter that's the place I don't want you to counter anywhere else it's okay when I say counter trend I mean counter trend market maker trend okay next night we expect this Stop, hunt, low, rise. The next night, we expect this. Stop, hunt, low, rise. They tricked you out with a little false move, but you got your stop, hunt, low, pins to the mayonnaise, rise. Notice how when you get to level three, after the rise, the big candles or the aggressive stop, hunt candles turn to the top side here and here. They are now trapping long holders. Understand? They are trapping traders long now. You guys just hang in there. Just write down mayonnaise. We'll talk about it. As a trader, I had a Diet Coke, but a sip of Diet Coke. You gotta understand how to read the moves and understand what's going on in the market. Where the trap volume is, what the market maker is doing, how he's jamming up the traders. That is why it is not necessary to analyze your charts all the way back to Kingdom Come in February of 07, I mean 1907, that people that follow technicals do. Reading the market maker over the last three to five days at the course of a week will give you a directional bias, identify where the volumes are trapped and where the retail traders are stuck, and you will have your directional. Identify the midweek reversal. Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, it's coming in. Midweek, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, reverse. Wednesday, Thursday, drop. Rise Sunday, Monday, make a big fat M, drop Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, end Friday, and pull back. This is the cycles you have to be able to walk up to a chart and identify. Our group of traders that understands and saw the sell-off coming when they hit the high three times on Sunday night going into Monday. When market makers take the trouble to go back a third time to a level and don't break it, the correction is imminent. When market makers go back a third time, repeat the low of the day, the rise is imminent. They didn't go back to the level because they felt sorry for you and wanted to let you out of your trades. They went back there a third time. Because there was so much freaking money down there, they couldn't stand it. They had to come back and grab it. If you understand that and start understanding the other side of the chart, not the side that you see, the side that they are showing to you, 
and start to think like they think, you will start to have success in the business. And if you get it quickly, a light bulb will go off. It will be almost immediate. You must anticipate when and how these moves will present themselves. The timings I'm going to talk about, the session starts, session ends, the Brinks trade. I will cover all of this for you. You can truly beat the market maker by simply trading in line with his behaviors. For you new guys, because in the session changeovers, we anticipate a reversal, New York reversal part of the cycle. I want you to start to look to take your profit. If you're a London trader, you need to enter in the London Open and be out by the end of the session. If you're a New York trader, I want you to look to make your entry between 8 and 11. 9.30, we'll talk about that. Look to be out by 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. When your take profit is hit, or when the market comes to rest into consolidation to trap the traders for the next day, you take. If a trade does not see substantial profit in two hours, take your profit or a small loss. This is not negotiable. Why? If you see a perfect W formation or a setup and it doesn't move in the profit within two hours, upon further analysis by the market maker, the contracts were not straddled in the configuration that he had hoped for. This lack of configuration forces him to hold the level beyond the two hour mark to accumulate. The accumulation phase on an extended period of time could lead to another stop hunt against the original position you thought you had. Correct. Save yourself the pips. Take a minus seven plus five plus two minus three. Scratch yourself out and get on with your day. Example. Level one consolidation. Okay, we had a three a three hit to the high in the GBP crosses. They went high one more time at the London Open to validate the long holders, to make them feel good about themselves, warm and fuzzy. The bottom fell out. Today, they showed what appeared to be a W going into the red box. There's no chart up here. I'm talking. Take notes. Market makers extended the consolidation zone and did not rise much off of the low today. They then hit it again. Why? Three levels wasn't seen. They needed one more hit to the low to hit their goals, to reach their targets. Sam, nice to see you in here, buddy. If the second leg presents, let's say you took a V bottom. Let's say you took stop hunt low, three candles to the low, and it pulled back, and you took that trade. If you're in that trade and you're counting two hours, and say an hour and 45 in, it paints a second leg, and it pulls back, restart the clock. The two hours is not negotiable. Don't come back and go, oh, I waited five more minutes because I don't want to hear that shit. If they don't move in two hours, the criteria or setup for which you took the trade is broken down. They got something else going on. Their contracts aren't straddled right. They're going to make another stop on or a move. Sometimes you'll take it off and you go, damn, I had it right. Sometimes you'll take it off and go, oh, it's stop on it again. The reason for our setup or the criteria which you took the trade on is now broken down. It becomes a 50-50 gamble. We are not in the 50-50 gamble business. 
Go to the nearest Indian casino if you want to gamble. Your job is to take high probability setups based on market maker behavior. He shows you an action, you react to it. He shows you stop, hunt, low, you buy against the retail trend, take it long. He comes back to the level but doesn't take out the low, the trade is still good long. Start the clock over. He holds the second leg at plus five and goes into consolidation for two hours. You scratch the trade and give yourself a break. Okay? That's the rules. They're not negotiable. Write them down. There are three market makers strategically positioned around the world. One for each time zone. Some have five desks. Some have three desks. But for the most part, they work about six to eight hours a day. Here's the difference. You're one guy. You put your trade on. You lift your stop. You sit there like a moron and nurse it for three, four, five days. These guys go about their business. They're unaware of the suffering that you're putting yourself through. They're unaware of the fact that you've been drinking Red Bull, punching your wife every day because you're in the wrong trade and sitting there like an idiot waiting for it to come back. If you get jammed up at the midweek reversal, you can forget it for three to five days. If you get jammed up at the midweek beginning or at the false move week beginning on Sunday, Monday, you can forget it till Wednesday or Thursday. They don't come back to the levels to release the traders because that's how they make their money. So if you sell into the stop hunt down, you got two to three days of rise before you're going to even see a chance of getting out. If you buy at the high of the week Wednesday when they make the first leg of the of the, w, the M, and you buy long at the top at the worst possible place, which people do, by the way, there's a whole system based on that by a guy named, I don't need to say it. He, he takes the breaks of the highs and the lows. I promise you it's not a profitable system. You don't need to waste your time. If you buy at the worst possible point on the chart, unidirectional swing dragging you to Friday into the weekend, sorry about your luck, buy some Red Bull because you ain't getting out. Our job in this group, in this room of traders, is to identify those extreme points on the chart, take them in the right direction against the herd, and convert a spot to a three-day swing, or maximize your gains by following the market maker bias. That's it. That's the job. I know it sounds too simple, but when you can understand what they're doing on the chart, it really is. So keep in mind, when you become exhausted, all they do is come in, change shifts, talk to each other. They get started with a fresh set of objectives and targets, and you're sitting there like a nutcase, hoping you don't burn your account down. That's why you've been struggling in this business. I showed you an army of traders against you in a room that unless you understand them, you really have no chance. This week, I will change that for all of us. All right, this is just an example to show you the desks. If you look right here, they got uh, one, two, three, four, Five desks. They got some pretty good coverage, man. They're up. Chicago, New York, London, Hong Kong, San Francisco. How are you, one human being, going to trade against five desks that are all fresh, feeling great, come in in their suit, drive to work in their Bentley convertible, and you're exhausted sitting there nursing a trade, trying to get what you had back? It's very tough if you don't understand. All right, same thing. Here's their coverage. Three desks. See them? One for each time zone. One for each session. Okay. An extended rise by the market maker of three levels. The levels are not going to be stair-step, but when they are, it's game over. The levels can be described as bursts or movement in price. 
if you notice something about the charts, they will have an aggressive move come into consolidation. An aggressive move come into consolidation. An aggressive move come into consolidation. The consolidation zones are put there to trick you, and I'll talk about it. An extended rise of three levels will always bring a correction. Think. A market maker lent out his money, lent out his money, lent out his money. Shit, I'm running out of money. I need some back. Correct. On the drop, I buy from the sellers, buy from the sellers, buy from the sellers. Man, I'm running out of money. I need some back. Let's get a quick rise out of here. Get my orders back. On the counter trend trades, the 50 EMA should be used as your take profit. The 200 EMA, which lags and will be about the middle of the range, will offer the second take profit. The middle of the range is known as the 50% FIB. All you have to do is subtract the high from the low and divide by two. Take the high number minus the low. The high of the day, whatever that price is, minus the low of the day, gives you 100, and 100 pips to make it easy. 100 pips divided by 2 is 50. If the price is moving down, add 50 pips to the LOD, low of the day. That's your FIB retracement. Okay? Okay. I'm going to talk about the cycle that I talked about in my presentation, but I'm going to be much more detailed, and we're going to go over that after the break. Let me finish this slide. Actually, I'll break here. It's a good place to break. All right, I'm back. Hope you guys are doing okay. Is seven minutes long enough? What we're going to do is I never really went over the agenda tonight. We'll do a uh, do seven-minute bathroom breaks every hour, and then uh, we'll do about a half-hour break around 8, 8.30, something like that. No, it's already 7.20, so maybe 8.30. Enough for you to grab a little something to eat, and then uh, we'll finish out the night. And we'll have one more seven-minute break, and we'll, and we'll uh, go through. Okay? That's pretty much how I lay it out. That's the same way we lay it out for the live venue also. Okay. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Asubio, nice to see you. All you guys, nice to have you here. Okay. I left off talking about the pattern. I'm going to draw for you just like I do in the presentation, but I'm going to be much more detailed, and I'm going to cover the market timings, which are very important. Take notes. The first two days, and now especially, I'm going to lay out the structure and the behavior that these guys do. Then the last two days, we're going to break it down and help you to identify it on the chart. So what I'm saying is the first two days are vital. The chart stuff you've been trading is going to be easy for you. The trick is to dump your old baggage and open your mind to the next couple of days of material and allow it to settle in and sink in and become part of how you think or how you know the market works out. Okay. All right, so look, I talked about the daily setup. There's the accumulation phase. They set the initial high and low, the IHOD and the ILOD, the initial high of the day, initial low of the day. Okay, write these terminologies down. The stop hunt, we call SH, abbreviated, is the false move against their real intentions. That is the move that for years, people that didn't know me and know me now thought was momentum as breakout trading. When they saw the spike, the aggressive move, they thought that was the breakout or thought that was momentum in the marketplace. Some people want to print the slides off the screens. Look, we're grown. I can't stop you from recording and doing stuff. I don't issue a textbook because I don't want the stuff floating around in the form of a book. If you do something like that, I don't, first of all, I don't want to hear about it. And second of all, please respect the student agreement and my wishes. Don't let this stuff show up on the Internet. Okay? All right. 
Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I was supposed to make it full screen, go back in the slideshow mode. I don't know what I was thinking. Thank you for reminding me. Okay. All right. So the stop hunt is the false move against the real intentions. What everyone perceived in regular technical land or regular technicals as momentum in the market, but it is in fact a trap move to get the traders to validate the wrong way. The real move in the Forex business is slow. Slow and steady rise, slow and steady drop. If you've ever been in the right move with the wrong position, it just seems like it goes on forever and ever and drops and you, you start drawing. I don't know, people tell me, I draw a fib and I hope it holds, it goes through it. I draw a support line, it doesn't hold. I draw a trend line, it doesn't hold. It's a slow and steady, relentless move because market makers are all in. It's on all their volume. They're aggregated all in. And that slow and steady rise or slow and steady drop is them booking a profit. Market makers always end the day off of the low or the high 25 to 50 pips and go back into consolidation to trap the traders. Gerald, it is what it is, man. Okay, now, there's some other nuances in here that I want you all to, to write down. I'm going to try to draw on, on go to meeting. If not, I'll switch to paint. Okay, keep in mind, I failed third grade art. Okay, let's start here. 5 p.m., most dealers reset the high and low. Okay, some of you have seen this already. Some of you have seen it, but in the presentations, but you have not seen it to the detail that I'm going to give it now. So be patient with me. Take notes. This drawing is the entire business in a nutshell. So if you were texting on your phone, you got the TV in the background, if you pay attention to anything, pay attention to the section. 5 p.m., the high and low reset. Market makers make the quick push, right? 15 to 25 pips up. 15 to 25 pips down and consolidate. This initial move sets the initial HOD, the initial high of the day. All times are 5 p.m. New York time. All times are Eastern Standard New York, okay? NYC time. Sorry about that, okay? This move also sets the initial low of the day. You Craig Harris guys call this the Tokyo Channel. It's simply the market maker spread. Okay? They trade in between this range. Accumulating contracts. Anytime you see sideways movement in the market, it's not congestion. I've heard it called so many different things, it's funny. You don't have a chest cold when you're trading. It's not congestion. It's not a traffic jam. Anytime market makers hold the level and move sideways, they are hitting the stops, inducing traders to take a position, and collecting contracts for their pocket. That is it. There is no other explanation for it. other than what it is. Okay, now, between 5 and 8 p.m., New York closes at 5 o'clock. There is a thing I've heard it called Dharma. It's the dead time in the market. There is nothing going on. A lot of traders use this time to scalp the market with robots because it just kind of chops sideways. Let me illustrate this, then we'll talk about questions. From 5 to 8, there's absolutely nothing going on in the market. All exchanges are closed. From 8 to 8.30 p.m., there's a thing called gap time. All times are Eastern New York. 
Gap time is when the market maker comes on duty and he gets his instructions for the day from the powers that be of what he's supposed to do. Man, I wrote 8 p.m. twice. It's 8.30, sorry. 8.30 p.m. 8.30, 8.30. All right. The market opens, the Asian session opens at 8.30. Okay, what takes place in gap time? Hey, what's going on today? I got long holders trapped high on the aggregate at 129.27. I need you to hit the stops, pick up some pending orders over there, and I want price down at 125.35 by the end of the day, by the end of your session. Will do, got it. Hey, I got $600 million in open float. We're a little uh, out of shape with our, our equity. I need you to hit the stops and even some of that out. I need you to get it down to about $400 million in open float because we can handle that. Our equity pool is getting out of whack. It's not 8 p.m. in Tokyo. It's the morning over there. I don't really know how it, the times convert over there. It's 8 p.m. New York City to 8.30. Market maker gets his instructions. He goes to work. Now, he also is told that he has to continue to accumulate. Collect the contracts, balance out the books, whatever it is. Most of the time, the accumulation phase goes through the Asian session. On a perf in a perfect world, the accumulation happens all through Asia, breaks out London, starts the move, continues, reverses U.S., and goes back into consolidation. But if it was that simple, there's a lot of smart people out here. Craig almost figured it out. People would figure it out. So with that being said, they changed the session times when the moves occur to keep people confused and unable to figure it out. That's all it is. By switching times, they throw people off. Nuclear reactor blew up. Let's move the end pairs today during the Asian session. Duh. Nothing going on. Let's hold it and let's not move it to the U.S. Okay? They will hold the swing... through the session till about 1 to 2 a.m. Okay? Now here's what happens. At the start of the London session, the first move is to pick up the pennings and destroy the breakout traders. Some of you guys have heard of the Frankfurt Power Hour. There's no such thing as bullshit. What they do is they widen the swing early, Frankfurt time, and pick up the pending orders, validate any FIB patterns, and they take those guys out. In an ideal world, between 3 and 4 a.m., 3.30 being ideal. Between 3 and 4 a.m., they make an aggressive move in this example towards the high and extend the initial high of the day. That move is comprised of three individual pushes. One, two, three. Remember I told you about the number three in the presentation? Three is a psychological barrier for human behavior. You've been saying it all your life. Things come in three. Three strikes, you're out. If someone dies, they go, oh, one more. Right? It comes in threes. You've heard that crap all your life. We're programmed as people psychologically to procrastinate and to hesitate. The three pushes ensures the market maker that you will in fact chase that trade. The three makes you do things 
based on your human psychology, fear and greed and things that drive the market, ensures that you will take the wrong position. It's dirty, but that's why they do it, because it works. Here's what happens. You're standing there, and you see the thing push right out. It pulls back. You go, ah, maybe it's going long today. They hit it again. Bam. They extend the high again. You go, damn, look at Euro. It's going up today. I'm missing it. They hit it a third time. The third time makes you realize that you're missing the trade and you want to get on and you buy at the worst possible point in this scenario. You place your orders in here. Okay? This action goes on around 2.30, 2.45, 3 o'clock. When they get those orders hot, validated, and piled on, they quickly pull off 20 to 25 pips. And I'll go over this again. But just, this is a very important part of the business. Pay attention. They'll pull back quickly. They repeat the level but fail to break it. They fail to take out the high of the day. They might throw a wick above it. That's acceptable. The wick grabs the orders. They will then pull away and go into consolidation. They shift the zone away from all this work in here. The London session starts at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, New York. The Asian session ends at 3 a.m. Steve, that doesn't line up. The gap time from 3 to 3.30 is when the Asian market maker discusses his moves with the London guy that's coming on duty now. The London guy receives his marching orders from what Asia was able to accomplish or not accomplish and what needs to happen to keep the bank liquid and making money. When they pull away and go into consolidation, the traders are jammed up that are traded long above here. Higher level long holders are jammed. They will then make three levels of drop. Okay? Ask me to repeat the 3 a.m. time. No problem. The changeover, the Asian session ends at 3 a.m. The London session begins at 3.30 a.m. New York time. Eastern Daylight Time, whatever the hell we're on right now. Okay? The gap time is from 3 to 3.30. From 3 to 3.30, you might see a stop trigger. You might see them put in the second leg. Or start making the second leg. There's a trade that we call the Brinks trade, and I'll illustrate the rules for you, but I want you to understand. The Brinks trade is when the second leg of the M or W is formed on the 345 candle. Okay, write it down. The Brinks trade is when the second leg, M or W, could be a V bottom too, but for now let's just go M or W. Is formed on the 345 candle. What the hell are you talking about, Steve? False move, end of session. Price rises as we go into the end of the session in Asia. It makes a false move, session beginning. Issues a spike to the high and will close on a hammer 
at 345. False move session beginning. The reason that we call this a Brinks trade is because we're so certain it will pay out, you can back up the Brinks truck on it. There are two Brinks trades a day. I will illustrate them for you here. All pairs, any pair. If you get second leg M or W issues a hammer at 345, lights out. Back up the Brinks truck. You will get paid. The three levels of drop will form during the night of about six to eight hours. Look, I don't know your time zone. Convert it on timezones.com, man. I don't know. New York time, if you're in California, minus three. If you're in Hawaii, minus five. Figure it out. Paul, nice to see you. Write it down, buddy. And figure it out over there in Texas. I don't know what the hell's going on over there. All right. Need to come over there and eat some ribs with you, buddy. I miss you. Hope you're doing all right. Okay. When you get three levels of drop, most of the time, because you have an extended move, you will get the W formation on the opposite end of the chart, and you will get the retracement back into the range. I mean the 345 candle that paints from 330 to 345 and locks, okay? So now, the Brinks trade comes in, second leg M or W, when the candle paints from 330 to 345 and is a hammer spike. I'm going to talk about the rules and more stuff. We'll go over it. just want you to see it right now. Now, let's talk about ADR. If you have an ADR on a pair, which is average daily range, average daily movement, sorry about my drawing. Okay, now, a pair moves 100 pips, right? I just told you there's three levels of drop or rise. In this example, there's three levels of drop. What's 100 divided by three levels? To make it easy, let's say 33. I know it's 33.333, whatever it is. 33. Each level will contain approximately 33 pips. Right? Understand? Each level contains about 33 pips. So you have a burst or move of 33 pips in each level before retracement or consolidation is seen. They'll hold it a little bit. Mid-session, they'll consolidate. They'll burst 33 pips again. Consolidate around the 8 o'clock hour, a.m. Then they will burst again 33 pips to finish out the session. Understand? So if a pair is 150 ADR, like the pound or 200, take 150 divided by 3, you're going to get 50, bur 50 pip bursts of price movement. to give you the three levels. This is universal in every single pair, in every platform, with every dealer. And I always trade on the 15-minute chart. Just don't worry about charts right now. Just get this illustration down. Pay attention to this. This is the whole business right here. Don't worry about it, Mac. We'll get to it, buddy. Hang in there. Nice to see you. Okay. If a pair has an ADR of 150 pips, then you will get 50 pip price bursts. Then they will do the same thing. They will go into consolidation. They will trap short, hit the stop, show one more push down, pull back. Second leg will form. At 9.30, I'm sorry, at 9 o'clock, over here, this drawing is getting out of control. I should have did smaller writing. At 9 a.m., New York, the London session comes to a close. The New York market maker comes to work and he talks to the London guy. 
gap time, 9 to 9.30. At 9.30, the U.S. equities market opens. The Forex is lined up with the U.S. equities open to create the moves based on news releases and whatever else is going on in the equities market. If you are issued second leg W in this example, a hammer spike to the bottom at 9.45 candle close, 15-minute chart. Coke, I'll cover the ADR. Relax. If a 9, 9.45, a hammer is issued, brings trade number two. The reversal is imminent. If the second leg M or W forms the HOD or LOD at, at 345 or 945, that trade will pay out today. That's it. That's the Brinks trade. Those times are lined up. False move, session beginning, equities open. 930, the equities market opens, a hammer to the low. 15 minutes into the session, they pull it back and close a pane of hammer. They spike to the low and close the other way. They trap the traders, pick up the orders. Make the reversal back into the range. Consolidate, okay? Consolidation comes in around 12 or 1 o'clock in the afternoon. This happens in all pairs on a regular basis when you're hunting for the M&W. We have shadow boxes on the charts. We'll talk about it. Okay. Boy, I made a mess, didn't I? Let's see if I can get another clean one here. One, two, three to the high. You're going to get three bursts or pushes to the high. It can be in three candles, which is a work of art. It can be in one big, huge candle. But when you watch that candle, you will see three pumps to the high or three pumps to the low. The three pumps is based on trader psychology. The three levels is also based on trader psychology because you come to it and you see a beautiful downtrend. All the technicals are validated. They turned over. They're showing a drop. You go, man, I miss Euro's fall today. Let me take some of that. Bam. They pull it away from you and say, just kidding. Okay, here's the Brinks trade for the second leg. Here is second leg. If this leg issues a hammer, a spike, or if this leg is comprised from 915 to 945 of railroad tracks. Ah, sneaky. Here. If this leg is in two moves, green going up, red coming down, and this will be from 315 to 345. It's a half hour move. If that comes in at the session changeover, think about the second or third slide in. False move, trap move, end of the session, beginning of the next session. They jam you up at the changeover. 9.30, the same thing applies down here. 9.15 to 9.30, they issue railroad tracks. That goes on to 9.45, rather. Okay? If they issue one bar at 9.45 and it comes in as a spike to the low or a hammer, and this forms the LOD, the low of the day, or this behavior forms the high of the day, that is a Brinks trade. We're going to go over it again. Don't worry. Just want you to see it and get the concept. The three levels that are in the chart prey upon you to chase the wrong directional move. The, they put the brakes on at the bottom. When you sell into the worst possible point, they put the brakes on, jam everybody up right in here. Okay? The times again, you ready? 5 p.m., high, low, reset. I'm not going to write them all. I won't spell them all the way out. High, low, reset. Five to eight, it's dead gap. Nothing going on. Five to eight p.m., dead gap. Eight to eight thirty, Asian gap. 
Okay? I, I have a slide for this stuff, so if you're not getting it now, don't worry. 8 to 8.30, dead gap. I mean, uh, Asian gap. Session starts 8.31, runs to 3 o'clock. 3 to 3.30, London Asia gap time. Instructions are passed. 3.30, session starts. Brinks trade comes in from 3.30 to 3.45. The move to start the session and trigger the orders the wrong way. Three levels of drop or rise will be seen. The opposite behavior of the M or W is performed between 8 and 10, 8 and 11. The ideal time being 9, end of the London session, 9 to 9.30 gap, 9.30 U.S. session in line with the equities open. 9.45, if a Brinks trade is issued, you'll get a hammer or a spike to the low. These times are all right now daylight savings in line with what we're doing. In the winter, in the winter, when we move the clock, in the U.S., the moves will be seen around 2. But the equities open does not change because it's still 9.30 here in New York, no matter what the, the, the clock is on standard or daylight savings. Okay. The, so what happens is in the winter, the London session is an hour longer. It's irrelevant. 9.30, in line with the equities open. Ron, I don't know what you read or thought. Don't worry about it. It's BS. Here's the deal. All the times that you've read, all the stuff that you've been told at the retail level, all the crap, the clock on there from Yahoo and Auckland and New Zealand comes online and your mother wakes up and throws a couple trades on and uh, J uh, Japan wakes up and then New Zealand starts trading. It's all bullshit. Those times are garbage. They are not going to give you the timings. They are not going to say, we're going to jam you up at 331. They're not going to say that. You're not going to find that information out. Again, I need you to subscribe to something different. Don't rely on the stuff you've read. It's crap. Okay? These are the times. Take them to the grave with you. They are solid, rock solid, not negotiable. These are the timings of the business. And when you start to trade the method, you will see how often they come in right at 315 and 330 and throw railroad tracks. You're going to see how at 930 at the equities open, they'll spike the low. Of course, there's variations on these times. But the session times are not negotiable. These are when the guys come on. And these are when you can expect the moves. So now, understanding that there are, is, in fact, a timing element is going to change the way you come to the screen and when you view the screen. There are going to be some days when they make the moves early and you miss it. Yes. But if you think about what happened Monday night where they made a double top M and then they hit it again one more time at London Open, that London Open came in between 2 and 3 o'clock. There's your entry. You don't have to sit there and watch the whole thing all Asian session and London session. I'm telling you, I'm going to narrow it down for you for a 3 or 4 hour window of opportunity for London and a 2 to 3 hour opportunity for U.S. Okay? Does everybody have the notes on this drawing? I'm going to pull it. Okay, look, I don't know what time zones you live in. You guys are from all over the world. I could never figure it out. Every time I've given you is the time right now for New York minus wherever you're from or add from wherever you're from, okay? Okay, let me find the slides. Another here somewhere. Uh, let's see. All right, I, got, I don't know what's going on. Let's see. Here we go. Okay, so now. Now you understand what I'm talking about, okay? Let's look at things a little differently now. Now here's your accumulation phase. Okay? Here's your W formation with the second leg coming in as a hammer at 345 in the morning. Do you see that? Okay, I've circled it for you. You see it? Here is your railroad tracks to the high. 
Guess what time this structure was built? Between 9 and 10. The reversal comes in to end the day off of the high for them to go into consolidation and trap the traders long, holding long overnight. That structure comes in after the move is made overnight, right around the equities open and ends the day back in consolidation. Okay, Double railroad tracks when the high is held and not broken. See how the high of the day holds? and they keep hitting it, that high of the day holding, but when you don't understand what you're doing, you're thinking this, right? You're thinking up here. You're thinking the AB move, when the market comes to rest, by the CD extension, the lightning bolt. That's what all the retail traders think. But when the high fails to be broken for 30 to 90 minutes, up to two hours, when the high is not broken, it's safe to go the other way, keeping in mind the timing element that I've just added. Notice down here on the W how they set the low at Asia, spiked right past it to pick up the stops and pendings, and then just missed it the third time around. The near miss on the third time validates and confirms, especially at 3.30 in the morning, that you got the right directional bias. This is, in fact, the exact mirror image of what happened on the pound last Monday night, Sunday going into Monday. They hit it, they hit it again, they hit it again, but don't miss, don't take it out. When you see the LOD hold, the low of the day holds, you look to go the opposite way. They spike the low, lower than here. That move gets anybody that went long right in here, it takes them out. Their stops are in here, right? That spike to the low hits those stops. When they trigger the stops, they've now lined their pocket. Now, there's some amount of people that went long in here. Again, after that spike to the low, right? This second pass ensures that they take all those people out too. And also ensures that the people that were thinking this got jammed up as well. This behavior at the W and at the M plays out over and over again in every pair, every day, variations on the theme. So your job is to look for an entry near the low of the day, long. Look for an entry short near the high of the day. If you understand that, you'll have success in the business. Okay? See the false move in here they got? Look. That's where the count saves you and your timing element saves you. This was seven, six, seven in the morning. This came in at session changeover. Chasing in the middle of the run, not understanding the timing element, gets you, keeps you from getting jammed up. The timing element is very, very, very important. The pattern, the timing, and the count. Those, that's the order that, of importance that things are. Okay, so now you, you see it a little different. Okay, variations on the theme. How do they change it? What do they do? Changing the session in which the moves come will keep you confused. Changing, changing the severity of the stop hunts. Okay, you get an extended 100-point stop hunt. Stop hunts, by the way, are typically 25 to 50 pips, and I'll cover that in detail coming up. If they change the severity of something because traders are stubborn and won't let go of their positions, they'll make an extended stop hunt. They'll do something that looks like this. They'll come in, pull back, go up here like this, hang around, Traders aren't letting go of their positions. They'll hit it again and make the same structure and then reverse. Okay? They'll make a 75, 80, 100 pip stop hunt to trigger the traders to get them to go the other way. It kind of works like this. We're going to show you long. As a retail trader, I want you to take a long. I'm a market maker. I need you to take a long because I need some of my money back. So I 
break in three bursts coming out of the box, and I show you long. The traders don't bite. They don't commit. Well, I need you to commit. You don't believe me it's long? I'll hit it again and show you a long, buddy. You see it go up again. You feel as if you've missed the move. So now you're like, damn it, it is going long. I get on. Traders commit their funds. I go, ha, got you long. I was just kidding. Sorry about your luck. And I pull it down now the other way. The example of that, again, is the most recent chart, is Monday's three hits to the high. The third pass towards the high ensures that the retailers were long. But when that high fails to break, it is the signal for our group to take it the other way. Don't be fooled by the market maker's aggressive moves or the extended stop hunts to fall for his crap. Your job is to take a long near the locked low of the day and a short near at the locked high of the day. And I'll show you how to pick those points on the chart. The other trick that he does, he conceals the move behind the news announcements. You know that at 8.30 when non-farm comes out, that there's nothing different in Europe than there was at 8.25. He uses the news as the triggers to complete his patterns. That's why the news doesn't match the market behavior. And then you get these talking heads making up some crap that Oh, the Eurozone didn't bite for the bad news about the Euro. They took the Euro up today. That has nothing to do with it. It has to do with where they are in the market cycle and how the contracts are built up. If they take the market long or EURUSD long on negative Euro news, that makes no sense. But they might have formed a W yesterday and be at level two in the cycle, and they need to stop hunt low, rise the price. So that's why that behavior is seen. Nothing else. It has to do with their secret targets, their secret price objectives. Not, oh, man, I don't understand. Euro went up today. The news was negative. They say traders reacted positively. No, market makers faked everybody out with negative Euro news and rose the price. That's what they did. They concealed the cycle and complete the pattern behind the news announcements. You think they don't know that non-farm's coming out? First Friday of every month, they probably licked their chops waiting for that damn day to come out. They also blame geopolitical events. Nuclear reactor meltdown spiked the yen. I know they spiked the yen and got a lot of people excited, and it rose immediately after the spike. They did a stop hunt low, trapped the trader, showed momentum. People thought it, the bottom would fall out, and they trapped them four, five, six hundred pips in the hole. And I know people traded that without a stop and got jacked up because I got emails. The news and the politics of the world are secrets used to complete their private cycle and their pattern I've illustrated for you. Nothing more. Don't be a victim of the market maker anymore. It's over. Okay? All right, here we go. Forex trading times, you can actually write them down. I'll go over them, then I'll be quiet for a minute. 5 p.m., high low is reset. The market maker spread is set immediately at the open. 5.15, 5.30, right in that time, starts, starts his business. The Asian session, 8.30 to 3 a.m. I left the gap time off of there from 5 to 8, dead gap. Okay? I'm going to throw it in there right now because then I'll never, I'll never remember to put it on there. You guys keep writing. Uh, let's see. 5 p.m., to 8 p.m. is dead gap. That's when a lot of traders try to uh, scalp and all that stuff I talked about, all right? See, it spaces out. I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. All right, there you go. A little better. I need my wife up here to do this for me. Okay. Save it for good measure and blow it back up. Okay, 5 p.m. to 8, dead gap. Asian session, 8.30 to 3 a.m., gap time, 3 to 3.30. London session, 3.30 to 9, gap time, 9 to 9.30. New York session, 9.30 to 5. And I can tell you, 
as always, the uh, grab my pen. The New York session dies down between 12 and 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, 1300. 12 to 1300, 1 p.m. Okay? No, I did put it. End of day gap, 5 to 8.30. I put it at the bottom. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'll erase this one now. Just kidding. All right, I'll be quiet for a minute. Write these times down, man. Every other time you've ever seen is pure crap. These are the times. That's it, period. Okay, hey, a very good question came up. It says, does the 8.30 to 8.45 p.m. candle, which is the Asian session open, have any significance? It's a very good question. It's not consistent enough for you to make a profit because the moves don't usually follow through in Asia because most of the time Asia is used as a continuation, uh, accumulation part of the cycle. Excuse me. But it is, in fact, the session open. You'll see hammers and stuff like that issued around there. But most of the time, that falls into setting the accumulation channel or the market maker spread. So you're not going to get the follow through. I know Dick Schmidt likes to trade during those times, and he takes a small float out of the market during the Asian hours. Okay, well, I don't understand some of the questions. Are the timings plus or minus? Plus or minus what? Alan, confirm adjustment for winter in London Open. Okay, in, uh, we go move the clock back an hour. So during the Asian and London session, move everything back one hour for winter, which is coming up when we move the clock October-ish. Here's the catch today. you got to be careful. Yes, Craig, I'll read that in a second. You got to be careful about this is since it's Europe, London open, that side of the world, if they haven't moved their clock yet and you have, then you have the adjusted time. But they might still move around three o'clock an hour later. When it's when all parts of the world are honoring daylight savings time, when everyone's in line. So check, there's websites that talk about that stuff. Okay, yes, Craig, at the beginning of the session, you're looking for the false move. What happens is he'll end the session with an aggressive move, and then the new guy comes on, and they'll make a continuation of that move, false move. Let's say London was up. I mean, Asia was up, right? So Asia paints the first leg high. He pulls back, end the session, false move. London comes on, or trap move. London comes on. He makes the second leg of the W or M by pushing it up back towards the high. He might even spike the high and take it out to pick up the contracts. Then he'll reverse off of that number, false move session beginning, run his trend six to eight hours into U.S. And then he might make the first leg at 8.30 or 8 o'clock, go into consolidation, spike it again at 9.30, issue a hammer and reverse when the new guy comes on. False moves are made at the beginning and end of the session intraday to trap the traders into swap and to jam them up for tomorrow. The same pattern also repeats throughout the course of the week. You'll have the same consolidation, tight range Sunday going into Monday, false move week beginning down, a multi-session M or W, which is they set the level on Monday, repeat the level on Tuesday in line with the stop hunt, Okay, and then they'll make the unidirectional swing week ending a minimum of three days. That's where the guys that are catching the swing trades are coming in. The potential for a swing tra trade is three to six hundred pips captured at the peak formation high of the week, peak formation low of the week. If you catch one of those points, you got about a three to six hundred pip spread that you can grab for yourself. And I have people doing that consistently. I don't do it. The reason why is this. If you haven't noticed, I'm a little high strung. If I wanted to stay married, I had to get the laptop off of my night table with my positions on. So since I can't look at it without waking my wife up and pissing her off, I needed to just be flat at the end of the day, the end of my trading day. Okay? So that's why I just take more contracts, grab my float, and I'm done. And at the end of the day, everything's off the board. 
um, square, flat, whatever you want to call it, and that's how I trade it. All right, does everybody have this written down? It really is an important slide. Okay, cool. All right, let me just drive me crazy that I messed up the slide. I can't help it. Part of my personality. Let me erase the bottom of this. Let me erase this one right here because it was right. I didn't know that was on there. Okay, cool. Back in business. Okay, now, this is the timing is the second most important element of the business, right? I told you that. So you have to time map your dealer. Most important element of the business, the pattern. Market maker behavior, identifying that. Identifying his behavior at the right timing keys is solid gold. So now, the new indicators that we gave you, if you have Craig set, I'm sure he'll help you. Sorry, Craig, I put that on you. The new indicators have to match the time of the dealer you're using. If you don't have a dealer, I'd like you to contact Compass and let them put you into a good dealer. If you have a dealer, if you're offshore, if you want to trade, that's fine. But you have to identify the formations at the proper times or else they're garbage. You'll see M's and W's all day. If you don't understand the behavior at the gap times and the changeovers, you're not doing it right. Don't get confused with the time ribbon on the bottom of your broker's platform. That's their server time and where their server's located. Some of it's GMT plus 2, GMT plus 5, New York plus 6. You got to figure that out. I'm pretty sure Gary posted in the forum a little script that you put on your chart and it pings the server and gives you times all around the world. The broker server, your time, your trading zone, all that stuff. It's pretty cool. If you don't have it, go to the forum and get it. Put it on your chart, write down the times, bounce it off your broker server. Ping his server and get the times and make the adjustments accordingly. The way to make the adjustments is to go into the work time ribbon. I should have wrote some slides on that. I'm sorry. I will for next class. Go into the work time ribbon and make the appropriate adjustments. Okay? To match the timings, you should have your shadow boxes, your stop hunt zones all need to come in at the appropriate times to show you where the possibility of the reversal and the stop hunts will occur. If, you've, if you loaded the indicators today with Zen, if you haven't, it's okay. We'll look at the charts in a couple days. The charts are irrelevant right now. you got to grasp this concept and change your way of thinking. The chart is not important right now. We will look at the chart. you got to wrap your brain around the stuff I'm telling you first, and that's going to be a couple of days where we look at charts. I said this before, I say for the last time. All other time references are garbage and should not be followed other than the times I've given you. That's it. That's your new times. Okay. A little more about the Brinks trade. The two most telling candles come in from 3.30 to 3.45 at the London session opener. 9.30 to 9.45, U.S. opener sets up the Brinks trade. Make a note. Okay, I lost the chat window on you guys. Sorry. So I can't see if you're asking me anything. There it is. Give me a second. Sorry, guys. Okay. Get it off of there. All right. Here's what I'm talking about. Let me grab my little pen and let's talk about this. Kind of crazy. Consolidation. One, two, three to the low. Three bursts. Variations on the burst. I'll illustrate a few. Okay, some people are saying I went too fast on that previous slide. I'll go back one for a second. You guys should make a note. Sorry. Let me... Let me back up a second and leave that for a minute too. All right, write it down. I'll take a second. I'll have a sip of Diet Coke. Okay.
Coming right out of the box, you have three vector candles. The vector candles are an aggressive move. It's an engineering term or a, I don't know, Zayim came up with this term because he was very technical and he needed something to make him feel better. So we came up with this. Market makers extend the initial low of the day in three pushes, right? This is the initial low of the day, correct? They extend that low in one burst, two bursts, the third burst. The third burst happens to hit our pre-measured 25 to 50 pip stop hunt zone. The stop hunts are made in 25 to 50 pip increments because they know where people trade and put their stops. This box is 25 to 50 pips. The shadow box comes in between 3 and 4 o'clock because there's variations on the theme. Just so happened they issue a hammer right in the middle of the shadow box. You got three swipes at the low, 25 to 50 pip stop hunt zone. They issue a hammer in the shadow, which is the session changeover. Understand this candle was solid red at one time, right? You guys know this. Solid red pushing down. What does that do? Induces traders to go short. They then shift the zone away from the lower level shorts over here. But look what they did. They're dirty. They opened. They turned this red to push down one more time. You know what that did? They opened the spread around here too. When they get down here, they open the spread. Anybody that was already long in here has their stop. Where do textbooks tell you to put your stop? Three to five pips below the candle I got in at, Steve. That is an absolute sucker's bet. You will lose your money every time. The stop loss goes below the low and above the high of the day. I will discuss it exactly where it goes. Market maker's job is to take your money and hit the stops, right? I told you this already. They absolutely ensure that they're going to get all the weak long holders spiked out right there. Anybody that's traded down to here by opening the spread at the low. The two gray boxes are, the shadow box is the gap time of the session, the gap time going into the open. The big gray boxes are the stop hunt zones. Okay? If you took the breakout here, okay, you remember the breakout systems? You bracket, break plus a close, you entered here. You saw very little profit on the spike, and then they pulled back, and they jammed you up. If you didn't have the stomach to take the break here, you did not have a successful trade today. Or if you lifted your stop on the short, you were dragged backwards all freaking day. Anytime market makers hit a level three times and don't break it, the reversal is imminent. They will reverse. Look, hit, don't break it. Hit, don't break it. Hit, don't break it. There's your entry. If you entered here, you're okay. Why? You're okay because your stop goes above the high of the day. The high of the day will not be broken on these formations because there is some amount of money trapped above that price point. If they come back and break the level, it releases those traders' money back into their account. They're in the job of freezing the money in open float so they can take advantage of it and grab it up for themselves. Every chart that I show is 15 minutes unless I specify otherwise. Okay, so here's your opportunity for the trades. You had stop hunt low rise. Easily identified, Brinks trade in the shadow, 25 to 50 pips, three pushes out of the box. Two pushes, consolidate, one more push to pick up the orders. You had a straight rise. If you grab the entry in here, anywhere in here, after the hammer's issued in the shadow, you had a straight rise of profit. You were in profit in the first 15 minutes of the trade, depending on where you grabbed it, maybe in the first 30 minutes of the trade. You then went negative, which used to scare you out of the business. When that went negative on you, four, five, six, seven pips, what'd you do? You're like, oh, crap. They're going to get me. I'm going the wrong way. Any trade 
that you ever take with this method remains valid until your perceived low of the day or high of the day is breached. Let me say that again, it's important. Any trades you take with my rules and my method remains in play or valid until the low of the day where you should be entering long, the high of the day where you should be entering short is breached. What do I mean? Okay, let me draw. High of the day is formed right here. You took a short right off it. You got jacked up. You're excited. Okay, no problem. The better trade is just inside the shadow box short. That's all right, though. They hit it again. You're short right here. Your trade is negative. Your stop loss is above the range. You're out of the range. You're out of the grasp of the market maker. Think for a minute. He is not going to move a $4 trillion market to get Robert. Or Ted. I don't know if Ted's in here. He's not going to move the entire market back to get outside the range to pick up your measly one lot contract. No offense to your lot size. Understand, if he moves a $4 trillion market back up, he releases $500 million in volume to pick up your order. He has two hands. In one hand, he has $500 million grabbed up. Right? He'll look at it, right? He'll move to a level and analyze. He pulls away, and he goes into consolidation off the high, right? If there is $700 million up there, he nets $200 million. He'll break the high. He lets go of the 500 and grabs the seven. He's a greedy bastard. If you understand that, he is not going to move the market unless it's financially advantageous for him to get your stop order. Some of you writing that sometimes you feel like he goes after you deliberately. No. The reason why that you feel like that is because you've read all the same books that all the other guys, 90% of the traders have read. And you put your stop where 90% of the traders put it. So what's going on here is you get in and you go, oh, my stop's right here. This looks good. It's a good trade today. Market maker comes back, spikes the high, and takes your stop out. And you're like, damn it. I swear to God, he's personal against me. Then it drops like you thought anyway, right? He's going after me personally. No. You've all had inf the access to the information that everyone else has had. It's all the same general knowledge. It's all bullshit. So when everyone gets stopped out at that price point, it's because the technicals that you saw that he deliberately showed you on the chart validated what you read in the book so you took that trade based on that garbage and he laughed to himself as he hit your stops all hundred million of you understand that's why when you took those trades and they didn't validate and you felt like he was personally attacking your stop loss he was not he is not going to move a market to a price point to get Mac or to get Michael. He's not going to do that. But if it's financially advantageous for him, he'll make the second pass or the third pass. This costs money to move the market. I heard that it takes 10,000 lots to move the market. A pip. I, I didn't hear it. I was taught that. Think about that a minute. If you have to move the market all the way back up here, it costs money. If it costs money, he's not going to do it unless he can make some in the process. All right, I want you to notice some crazy stuff built into this structure or towards the high, okay? I want you to see a one, two, three back to the high in there. Do you see that? One, two, three back to the high. Why? To induce you to chase it long. I want you to notice they rise here and each subsequent pass fails to take out the previous high because there's trap volume here, there's trap volume here, there's trap volume here. There's stop orders all aggregated in here and in here. 
His job is to hit the stops, don't release the volume, hit the stops, don't release the volume, sorry about your luck, just kidding, and drop price 100 pips off the high to end the day back in consolidation. Boom, right here. End the day back in consolidation. And just if you weren't sure, he has to end the day on a hammer to trap anybody that was chasing it short last minute, snatch that away from them, and end the day trapped, carry you into the next day. Do you see what I'm drawing, what I've been illustrating for you? It's in there. Releasing the volume means that if there's a certain amount of traders that they already trapped, by going back to that level, it allows people to click their mouse and get out. Think about yourself in your own trading. How many times have you been jammed up in something and said, if it goes back to plus one, I'm getting out. If it goes back to minus five, I'm getting out. When you come back near the second pass, you will be minus some number plus the spread. Minus seven, minus five, plus two, plus one. I don't know. Where It depends on where you got in. So what he's doing... If he goes back and breaks that level, he's allowing those traders that were jammed up a chance to close their account out with a small scratch or a small excuse me, loss or gain in the trade. His job is to not allow that behavior, so he fails to take out the high. Okay? All right, I hope you guys are good. Let's see where we're at. Next slide. Okay, it's 8.30. We'll do this slide and we'll break for uh, 30 minutes is a good dinner time. We'll try 30 minutes tonight. If it's too long, we'll shorten. If it's too short, we'll go an extra five, whatever. Uh, I'm going to grab a little something to eat, and I'm going to get some more Diet Coke. If I'm not jacked up enough for you guys, I'm sorry. Some of you made comments. I feel fine, man. So if you think I'm too calm tonight, I'll be more excited tomorrow. Okay, look, very important to understand. Market makers have limitations. They are limited what they can physically do to the market. If you think about this for a minute, they're controlling the value of imports and exports. You buy Toyotas and you switch your dollars to yens. They're controlling that. They cannot just wake up one day and drop in a million pips and devalue the dollar or devalue the yen. They cannot do that. They have restrictions placed on them by the IMF and the World Bank to try to keep this world afloat. That is why the average daily range tool, told you I get back to it, Mac, is a useful tool and can only move most pairs about 200 pips a day to 600 pips a week. And if you notice something on some of these charts, they will open the week at a price point, go berserk, and come all the way back and close the week around the same number. They do not, contrary to popular belief, have unlimited equity. They got to get their money back. That's where the retrace against the trend comes in. They lend it out, they lend it out, they lend it out. They got to get it back. They are limited by weekly net change allowances. They have a couple of times during the month where they can run rampant, but they got to get it back under control. Think, use your head. If they could do that, they would destroy the world economy and things are bad enough without doing this to people. They have some limitations. Understanding the limitations gives you an edge. Understanding that they don't have unlimited movable pips gives you an edge. Okay? All right, let's take... It's 8.31. Let's go to 9 o'clock, and uh, we'll pick it back up from there. hope you guys are doing okay. We're going to go to about 10.30 tonight, I think, and then uh, we'll be good. All right, let me find my little clock somewhere. I'll pop it up there. Go ahead and grab a break. I ain't going to say anything now that it's break time. I won't do that to anybody. All right, let's see. Clear. Seven minutes ain't going to work. I saw a couple questions. Craig had two good questions. Let me uh, let me cover those real quick because they are uh, time appropriate. They're in the right segment. Uh, Steve, you said there's three important things, the patterns, the timings, and what? The answer is the levels.
Okay, most important element in the system, the pattern, identifying the patterns from the market maker behavior. The timings of those patterns and counting the levels. The levels are not going to come to you overnight. They're difficult. There's people that have been around me for a year still struggling with that. It is not an absolute necessity to be successful with this method. But understanding the levels will let you know when the reversal is coming, when to exit your swing trades, and so forth. Okay, weekly net change allowance was another question that came up. Let's say they open at a price point. They're given, just to make it easy, a thousand pip movement weekly net change. So from the open price point, in the three to four day swing range, they cannot exceed 1,000 pips on the close on Friday. So if they rise price 1,000 pips or 1,100 pips, they have to come back below the 1,000 pip marker that's given to them before the close on Friday to keep currencies from being devalued or whatever. There are seasonal targets quarterly. There's daily and weekly ranges that they're given. Understand they're making money, but at the same time they have to be cognizant or aware of what's going on in the world economy and the, and the world markets. They cannot destroy things. So they're given a price point on Monday or Sunday night at open, and they have a weekly net change of 500. They run at six, 700 pips. You can expect the reversal back in to underneath the 500 limit by Friday close. Hence, false trap move on Friday to end the week. Okay? And then the cycle starts over. All right. Those are some good questions. I think some of the other stuff wasn't pertinent to right now. Let me look a minute. Nice to have you, Adam. Glad to hear you're doing so well. Shahid from uh, Toronto. I think you left. You'll be back. All right, Ronald. Nice to see all you guys. All right, let's get going again. Everybody settled in from their break? Got something to eat? Okay, listen, the reason for the break is I want you to think. I don't want to just sit here and I want to throw a fire hose at you with tons and tons of information and you sit here just mesmerized by what the hell did this guy just say. That's not the point. I talked to you about some stuff, some concepts. Think about it on your dinner break. Resonate on a little bit. Tonight, I'm going to give you some homework assignments to think about more stuff. We're going to go about four hours of time, 10.30, 10, I don't know. We'll figure it out wherever I am on the slides. The point of that is, is that I don't want to just sit here and just keep stuffing stuff down your throat. I want you to think about it overnight. And when I've taught live, I noticed that people have about had enough in about four hours. I'm not so full of myself that I don't realize you get tired and that I think I just have so much great stuff to say. I, I understand that. So four hours is the marker to where you've had enough of sitting in the chair. Seems to be when I'm teaching live, people start slouching their chairs, putting their heads on their desk. Gloria fell asleep on me one time, four hours in. So I realized four hours is a good marker. Take a break about halfway through, get up, eat something, go smoke one. Asubio, did you quit, by the way? I've been trying to quit Diet Coke. I almost made it, and I fell back into it. I'll get it, man. Anyway, the point is, is that I want you to get this. Me rushing through it to get all the information to you is not the point. The point is it takes, it's a process. It takes some time. I asked if you quit smoking, Asubio. I know you were trying. I've been trying to quit Diet Coke. Anyway, that's the point of the break, okay? Appreciate it. I want you guys to really conceptualize and understand this. It's not going to be part of you until you conceptualize and it becomes your own. And that's the point of going slow and making sure everybody gets it, okay? All right, back to the slides. Market maker moves, all right? We understand all the things we talked about, the pattern, the behaviors, what they do. So what can they do? What, do they really, what can they really do to you? They are limited by weekly net change and allowances. They're also limited to they can hit your stops up or down. They reverse off of the high or low and create an intraday trend change, which happens, which happens a lot. They can do a straightaway, straight rise or drop, which is the finishing move on the margin levels of the other traders. I'll illustrate that for you. Don't worry. 
timings and test your patience, right? What do I mean by that? You get in something, you lift your stop, you're down a negative float. They go into consolidation, change shifts, the Asian guy comes on, you're still sitting there. What happens after a day, day and a half of doing that? Your nerves are shot. Your patients have been tested to the, to the max. You're drinking Red Bull, kicking the dog, cursing under your breath, and you finally click out of the trade because you can't take it anymore. Understanding that all they have is timings and stop hunts and trap moves kind of moves the, removes the curtains from Oz. You understand what's going on. That's all they got. They're limited. The problem is, is that the other technicals set you up for failure and keep you chasing the wrong things. Like I said earlier, it ends today. Okay, this is one of my favorite charts. This is two days back to back. Go look at it. It's in the pound. It's in March 15th. Stop on high, spike to the high drop, W formation to end the day back in consolidation. The next night, stop hunt low, there's your three pushes, your vector. Right? Come right out, rise price, right back. Here's your weekly net change, Craig. Two days, no change. The price closed exactly where it opened. It's kind of funny. This is they got to be kidding, right? They come out, hit the stops high, three pushes, drop. W formation back into consolidation. The next night, they exceed the trap level here by making a stop hunt to trigger the traders, induce the pendings, and then snatch the market away and run it back, right back to the same price point they were at yesterday. That's why the pattern is so important. You really can't count the levels in there. It's a little harder. But the patterns and the timings are right there, exactly as I stated for you and illustrated and drew out. I mean, one could argue that this is the U.S. reversal, and this comes in around 9 o'clock in the morning or whatever, and then they go back in the consolidation. But this is the epitome of what I've drawn for you on the charts. It, it's there. What I want you to do as a trader is stop getting caught up in the moment. Getting caught up in the moment forces you to make irrational decisions. You need to have a plan of attack before you come to trading in line with the market maker's trend. Don't let the aggressive moves fool you. Don't let their big spike candles to the high lure you into thinking it's momentum. There's going to be a midweek reversal, which will coincide with the intraday reversal and levels. Okay? What I meant was, okay, let's draw this little pattern over here, okay? Consolidation, Sunday, Monday, right? Sunday, false move. Let's just call it Sunday. They break to the downside. They hit a level. They pull back. This might be Monday. Okay? Okay? They have a trap vol amount of volume there. They go into consolidation. Tuesday, they come back and repeat the level. This is a multi-session W formation. But what happens here is they come back. This might have been uh, Asian session. They come back and repeat the level at the London Open as a stop hunt. They disguise the second leg as a stop hunt to make the traders continue short. They take out anybody that went long in here, and then they reverse the market. Then you will have your three-day unidirectional swing to the end of the week or in going into Thursday, and then they will make the pullback to end the week and end the consolidation off of the high. This number in the three-day range might exceed the net change allowed for the week. So they have to pull back to end the week below their net change allowance. The threshold might be right here at 500. They exceeded it. They know what they got to do. They got their marching orders. They got to come back below and close. Okay? Once you can identify consistently, and by the way, the one-hour chart helps with this, 
the midweek reversals and the multi-session M's and W's, you can convert your spot trades to swing. You know you have two and a half to three days of up cycle or down cycle with the maximum potential move of two to six hundred pips. If you catch the trade going into Friday, understand that you're going to get a reversal pattern coming out of one of the opens, London or New York, you're going to get a stop hunt. If the stop hunt is counter to your directional bias, you take. All right, let me explain that again. If you get into day three and you're a buyer at the beginning of the cycle, when you get to day three, if London open, they come out and hit the stops high, you take. You get out because the reversal is coming. You react to their action. Market makers hit the stops low, you buy against the retail trading herd. Market makers hit the stops high, you sell against the retail trading herd. The M&W, the multi-session M&W will be very, very aggressive. Think about what they're doing. They're taking profit, cleaning the board, and putting money in their pocket. In order to do that, those levels have to be very aggressive. Okay, now let's look at some typical week stuff. Now that you understand a little bit more about the pattern. Okay? Aggressive move, week beginning. Trap the traders, jam them up. Stop hunt low, rise. Back into consolidation. Stop hunt low. Rise 100 pips. An extended high of the week formation. Extended. Why? The blue box is 103 pips. This is about a 150 pip move. What happened? You didn't believe me I wanted long? I'll show you long. But if you notice where they cut the level, this is in fact peak formation high for the week. If you have a peak formation high for the week, we expect three days of drop. Okay? So what's expected? I'm going to give you some more slides on this, but think for a minute. Day one, peak formation high, high of the week, got it. The next night, hit the stops high drop or straight drop. The next night, hit the stops high drop or straight drop. Three days. End of cycle, look for the W reverse. That's the three-day swing trade cycle. Peak formation high, high or low of the week is identified. You expect two more stop hunts in line with the peak formation. If he throws at you something different, exit the trade and look for a new signal. Okay? So here, peak formation high of the week, right? You got the midweek false move. They jam people up long. People think this is the famous continuation. When the high holds, Notice the blue tracer in here. I'll talk about that. Very important. When the high holds for 30 to 90 minutes and they pull back, you have your peak formation. The, project, the projection is M-A-W. A1, A2. Peak formation. V-top, I mean V-top turned over. V top reversal. Okay? Three levels are seen. One, consolidation. Two, consolidation. And three was underway. Okay? The two cycles, and I have slides, so I'll talk about it again, is WVVM. It looks like a W. One, two, three, reverse. One, two, three, 
reverse. That's the market maker cycle right there. Okay? M A A W V uh, W V V M. Why the V's? Sometimes you'll get W's every single time. But here's the thing. If you have your market maker bias, high of the week, low of the week established, and you know the direction, you can trade off of the first stop on out of the box V bottoms. You don't have to wait for the second leg because you know the cycle. The best trades are multi-session M's and W's, multi-session or uh, intra intra-session M's and W's. Those are the best patterns beyond the shadow of a doubt. It allows you to grab close to the low of the day. Your stops will be tighter. It avoids you sitting through the repeat the level stress of them coming back. But if you understand the cycle and caught the directional bias, then this spot trade can, can be converted to a swing. Why? I caught the peak formation high. The next night, hit the stops high, I'm still good. If they break out of the top of the box, I'm still good in here. Why am I still good? Because they hit the stops high, issued railroad tracks at the London Open in line with the peak that lets me know it's a false move drop. Now, they've created some amount of margin trouble. They've created a ton of congestion, right? Chest colds in there. Hitting the stops in both directions, picking up the contracts. No congestion. Take some NyQuil or some Tylenol PM or something. You understand that you got one more day of drop on the cycle. Your bias is to the downside. So you're looking for excuses or reasons. Stop on high drop. Okay. I don't want you to counter trend trade at A1 and V1. I don't want you to trade back towards the peak formation high because it's a sucker's trade. I have slides. Don't worry. I'm just illustrating it now. We'll get to it. Okay. Here it is again. Consolidation. Peak formation. I expect... Hit the stops high. Same slide. Sorry. Now the reversal comes in. End of the week. I expect this. I had three levels of drop. The pins on the candles will become the direction that they're trying to trap. Very important. Write that down. The pins on the candle at level three will become or start to paint in the direction that they are trying to now trap. Level 3 aggressive moves will be seen. Notice how the first two days of the cycle, it drops down smooth, and then when you get to level 3, it doesn't seem to go anywhere. Why? You're reeling it in, reeling it in, reeling it in, grabbing up the traders. Okay? Again, Hit the low, spike it. See how this went slightly past it? They spiked it with a hammer right outside the box. The spike of the low absorbs the pending and triggers the stops of anybody that got it right. They open the spread at the low of the day. You'll see them work this. The spread gives them an edge against the retail traders. It's their weapon. If you're a buyer, they open the sell side. Drop the sell side below the price point. The sell side picks up those orders for short holders. But the buy traders are held. The level is held. It doesn't move. It sits there. And the same is done in the opposite direction. At the top of the price range, the sell orders are held, and the spread is opened up to pick up any buyer or buy orders on the other side. They work the spread against you. They work the spread against you to pick up the orders. Okay? Some typical stuff that we all know. When traders lose money, they usually take a day off to reevaluate their decisions, their life, their family, why the hell they got in this crazy business. I've read every freaking book. How come I can't make any money? Market makers know that this is happening. They know who they've called out. They know who's in trouble. They know how much money they made. They go into a chop which I showed you on that previous chart. It looks like it's level three. We call it level three behavior. 
that chop gives you a chance to come back, re-participate in the market. The levels don't change. They hold it. They're chopping, chopping, chopping. What happens? You go ride around in your car in the middle of the night, pissed off, go to lunch, pet your dog because you've been kicking them all week. So they got to hold the market and chop it around to get traders back into the fray. The cycle continues. The behavior starts over, and they suck you in again. Okay, something very important. The patterns are the same no matter what time frame you're looking at. A multi-session M or W will look a little different on a one-hour chart or a four-hour chart. The four-hour chart might be railroad tracks because it's eight hours, two sessions, right? Four hours of candle in, four hours out. On a railroad track, you might get, on a one-hour chart, you might get one railroad track on one side and a spike on the other side of the leg. But understand that the W or the M, when it's formed, it will be very aggressive. But once the work is done, you will get a straight aggressive move away from it. That's where you've been blinked your eyes and been down big in a trade. Our group goes into profit immediately and stays in profit. It's absolutely amazing when you catch it right. You'll get, you're going to see. You grab second leg M or W right after they issue the second or third spike. You're going to go right into profit. Some people are asking about the charts. 15 minutes, unless I say otherwise. The one hour and 15 minutes are what we're going to talk about in here. Okay, look. One, two, three bars to the low, aggressive. Shifter consolidation zone. Okay? Breakout traders had a bad day. The shorts got rewarded. The longs got punished. Shorts got rewarded. Okay? Aggressive, three candle move. Pins to the bottom. Notice how the pins spike to the bottom and pull it away. They're snatching the market away from the lower level short holders and jamming them. They then quickly pull away and come right back. In here, in the U.S. session, they throw two pins to the downside at the appropriate times. Session changeover, Brinks trade. That move fails to take out the London low. This move takes hours to develop. You now have your weekly reversal. It came in late Monday. That's okay. It happens. They're not going to make it Wednesday at 3 o'clock in the morning perfect for you every time. you got to identify what's going on here. You have the first hit to the low, late Monday, uh, London session. The second hit to the low, U.S. session, 9.30, change over, session change, second spike. End the session with a false move down, first spike. Start the session with a false move down. Hammer, issued at 9.30, equities open. You, your trade has entered right there. You can't pick a better entry than that. Stop loss is tight right below the low of the day, which happens to be the low of the week. You've identified this behavior. You can keep your trade, hold for three level rise, one, two, three. Reverse is eminent at the mayonnaise. Pin to the mayonnaise is a sell. You take the reversal here, end the day back in consolidation. Okay, I don't want you to take that reversal as a, as a newbie. That is mostly a jam move because they've snatched the market away so quickly on the second leg to put all the traders that are short in deep trouble. That aggressive move does not always give you a nice retracement to counter. Okay, that's the DNC. Do not counter V1 and A1. I got slides. Relax. Mayonnaise is a 200 EMA. Okay, 
we have our directional buys for the week. We have a mini W inside an aggressive W after the false move down. Three vector candles to the low. Fake out the traders. Validate the short orders. Show a trend continuation. What happened in here was you sell the rises in a downtrend. So what happened is the traders that were long ended up with a scratch plus one when they came back. The traders that thought they were right and had their stops all aggregated in here are now stopped out on the second leg. Any pending orders that were trying to catch the break below the low were validated or turned hot on a widening of the spread at the lowest point on the chart. Second leg, intraday uh, U.S. session, intra U.S. session rather. This hammer, when that hammer pulls back, that was solid red at one time, right? That went down there all the way down to the low of the day, came right near the low and sat there. When you start watching this shit, it's crazy. The candle will go solid red all the way down there and sit there. And you're like, what the hell's wrong with that candle? Did it die? Did my computer feed stop? It's just sitting there at the bottom. The candle sits at the low of the day. Some dealers will, you can see this, some dealers you cannot. But if you put the bid and ask line on your live chart, you will watch those two lines separate. The separation of those two lines or the widening of the spread lets you know I got these bastards today because they're punishing the retail traders with pending orders that are sitting below those price points and stop orders that are sitting below those price points. The widening the spread is part of the confirmation process. If they widen the spread a few pips near the low, on the second or third pass to the low, you got it today. You own it. Validation comes in when they complete the candle at the end of the 15-minute cycle and issue a hammer at 945. That is the confirmed locked reversal. Confirmed by their behaviors at the appropriate timings. You got it. You enter on the open of the next candle. Stop loss goes below the low candle or the low of the day. You look at the big board. I'll talk about stops and we'll look at the big board and stuff. They immediately shift the market or shift the zone away from the lower level short sellers and in one candle take back all of this damage. See this square right here? This candle seems to take all that back in about 15 to 30 minutes. You know when they shift the zone and snatch the market away from those guys, game on. You got it today. That is the confirmation you need to know you're in the right directional move. They'll shift the zone in one big candle, 15 to 30 pips. They'll shift the zone in two candles, 15, 20 pips apiece. But the shifting of the zone comes in a 25 to 50 pip move to get the hell out of there. They want to get the hell out of there to put all the retail traders into a panic. And it works. You lift your stop, you get nervous, you're like, oh crap, oh crap, what did I do, what did I do? The shifting of the zone creates the fear and greed that you're afraid of in trading. So when they shift the zone and jam you, you go into profit trading this method, you know you got it. That is further confirmation that you have caught the right directional bias off of the low of the day. Think about what you got. Okay? Consolidation, 41 pip channel. Blue box, okay, I'll, I'll circle what I'm talking about. There's the width of the box. Initial high to initial low is 41 pips. Market makers come out. They show one, two, three to the low. You guys weren't falling for it. They came back one, two, three to the low one more time. Vector. A big anomaly on the chart, a spike. Retail trader perceived momentum. The vector is retail trader perceived momentum. You take that breakdown. They immediately put the brakes on and issue two pins to the low. Hmm, it's kind of funny. The pins turn to the downside. I don't see any pins on the other candles coming down. But now the pins are on the downside. They pick up the orders and snatch it away. Pick up the orders and snatch it away. Now they got you if you're a retailer. They quickly pull back. That pullback towards the 50 validates the... What the hell is it? Rally base drop, I don't know, drop base rally or some crap that they teach in these other schools. I can't remember how it goes. But anyway, 
but it's a two-pronged approach. It also triggers the stops on the second pass down of anybody that was long and got it right. And it also lets those traders that end up at a plus one or a scratch makes you scratch out with plus one or plus three or minus five. There's a lot going on in that aggressive W formation. Understand? Same thing in the M. Again, they flip the pins to the downside to trap the traders at the lower levels. Because after all, the 50 and the 200 are wide open. So you got anticipated continuation down. But we know now that if the low that was formed during London holds and they make two more passes out at forming another W and issue a hammer at 945, it's game over. You are a buyer against the retail trend in line with the market maker. You own these bastards today. Further confirmation is seen on the shift of the zone off of the low to further trap the lower level short sellers and to take out the entire six, eight hours of structure work all in here that they've done. That one candle destroys the entire structure that was built against the retail traders trapping them all. The market is then into consolidation to create false sense of security for the downtrend continuation. It is again shifted away to trigger the stops, bounce off the 200 pins to the mayonnaise, and ends the day back in consolidation. Their business is done for the day. They did their damage. Okay? You guys good? Understand? Now, I have my bias. I know what to expect. The next night, I expect... Stop, hunt, low, rise. The next night, I expect stop, hunt, low, rise. They mess with you on the timings on this particular chart because they did the stop, hunt, low, and rise by the time you come to your terminal at London Open. It happened in Asia. You missed it. Not a big deal. But right at the end of the box, they threw railroad tracks to the low, and they even threw a hammer. There's a W in there, or there's a V bottom. You expect this, and they gave it to you. See it? Okay. They come out of the box. They, they go low. You are a buyer against the retail trader mentality long because you have your W formation. That's your anchor point for the week. W, V, V, M, sorry about your luck. Do not counter, this, this is a counter here that worked. Do not counter here, I'm sorry, at V1. Do not counter at V1. It doesn't give you the trade. See the setup? It does not offer you the retracement to counter. It doesn't pay out. Now, Notice how the pins flip to the top side. Notice how they flip to the downside over here. Notice how the aggressive moves end in pins to the top side. Railroad tracks at the U.S. session. This is level three behavior. Chop. One, two, three days of rise is seen. The skies in different sessions moved over a little bit to mess with your timing. Market makers give it out, give it out. Give it out, need some back. Sell to the buyers, sell to the buyers, sell to the buyers. I need some of my money back, man. Correct the market. Okay, hope you guys are seeing this stuff. Okay, remember I mentioned in the thing, market makers will not move in one direction more than three days in a row without some type of collection of money. I know you say, Steve, the euro's been rising since my birthday, blah, whatever. I understand that. It didn't make a straight rise. Candles aren't stacked on top of each other straight up to heaven. They have to make pullbacks. Now remember the psychology element that's built in. The psychology element warrants that you will get on the trend at the worst possible time because of the three pushes inside the chart.
they show you something, they get the whole world seeing it, technically, and then they act against it and mess with you. Notice the breakdown of this chart, okay? This is an entire week. Here's my Sunday, here's my Friday, Sunday, Monday tracers, right? Okay, let's look at it again now. Now with a different eye. Consolidation, false move week beginning, W formation, multi-session. I got a U.S. session, leg one. I got an early Asian session, leg two. Right? Intraday, spread out over the day tracer, right? This is the day changeover. This is the 5 p.m. reset settlement, these lines. Okay? Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, coming out of Monday's consolidation. Midweek reversal. Aggressive move towards the low, validates the crossover down. The W formation, late US, early Asia. You missed it. But guess what? They offer you a pullback in the US. There's your peak formation low for the week. Three levels of rise end on a, an aggressive railroad track, pull back, consolidate into Thursday, repeat the level, but murder the stops and pick up the pendings with a monster pin above the first leg. The light blue tracer, the light blue tracer is yesterday's high and yesterday's low. When market makers throw a hammer above the blue tracer, that's for all the Joe Ross followers that take the break out of yesterday's high. They snatch those guys and reel them right back in. No offense to Joe, he's a great guy. That is our signal, notice it's in the red shadow box, to enter. Three days, three levels, they hit it, they pull back, they go into consolidation, they issue a hammer above yesterday's HOD or above, which happens to be the high of the week. Notice how the two come in together. The high of the day on Thursday coincides with the high of the week. They repeat the level on Friday, trap the traders coming off of the U.S. session into consolidation in here. Then what do they do? The pattern continues going into the weekend. Bam! They hold it and they, they spike down going into the weekend. Someone said the sound is bad, is it? Don't make some wise up there if everyone can hear me. No? Okay, it's not bad or no, it is. Yes, no, all right, it's fine, okay. Okay, thanks, got it. All right, so now, notice the difference in this W, how it's tight. There's only a few hours in between. This one is a whole day in between. This is London Open, re-hit again, almost in the U.S. session with a monster spike to the high. The monster spike to the high lets you know that they grabbed what they needed to grab. When you see that spike close, the damage is done to the retail traders. That spike is the aftermath or the wake of what they have done. What do they use to create the spike? Could be news, could be bullshit, could be your mother stubbed a toe. It doesn't matter. The behaviors are the same. They use the news to create that spike or create some type of anomaly on the chart to get you to fall for it. Listen, the retail side of the business works or these guys wouldn't be so wealthy. Okay? Okay, so now you got trend is down, level 3 correction. You see this formation going into the US session. They hold the level overnight. But you know the high was formed, they repeat the high. You're a, you're a seller against everybody else. You know that in level three, the trend cannot go down forever and does not go down forever. You identify late in the U.S. session 
railroad tracks, and then consolidation to end the day. You are a buyer against the retail trader's down move. And here's how it played out. This is what we call a half a Batman. They hit the stops one more time. If you weren't already in and you happen to be in front of your terminal, you're a buyer right there. I want to say two or three weeks ago, I think Rick's in here. Uh, there was a monster W formation in the Asian crosses. I missed it. I was eating at the Cheesecake Factory. That piece of cheesecake cost me thousands. It was double railroad tracks in the Asian session on GJ, EJ, and I think Rick just happened to be in front of the terminal and caught that 80 lots long. I don't know if that was okay to say, Rick, but sorry. And I think he booked a monster gain that day. So my cheesecake cost me, I don't even want to say the number out loud, it makes me sick. It was such an obvious trade that I promise you when you go back, you'll see it. I want you to go back, write it down, go back to GJ and EJ, I want to say about two or three weeks ago. I think I was actually at the Columbia. I was, I'm at the beach, so not now. I'm staying at the beach, but I think I missed that. I was at eating, I don't know, yellow rice and chicken or something. My gosh. Anyway, the moves are in there. Go back and try to identify that. Okay. I've been talking about their structures. Let's talk about the entire structure. Let me explain to you one more time. If you're sick of hearing it, I'm sorry. But this is, if I mentioned to you already, is the whole business. You've got to get this. You've got to understand. Okay? Every single day during initial market hours, Asian session, they're going to set the high and low. It's the initial high and low. They trade within that range and allow people to build positions, but not allowing anyone to take much of a profit. This is why you don't trade, Dave, Asia Session. They then spread the swing. What time? 1 and 2 a.m. They widen the swing. That widening of the swing comes in before the London Open. Because the Asian market maker wants to validate the pending orders for the breakout traders. Okay? At the start of the European session, anybody? 3.30? They will severely correct the rise against their real intentions. Stop, hunt, false move against what they're really going to do for the day. The drop or rise will trigger all the stops of the weaker traders, the ones that have taken the school, the regular technicals, read the books, the stop losses that go five to seven pips below your entry candle or above your entry candle. The weaker retail traders that have fallen into some proverb that says, if you're going to lose, don't lose a lot and make a really tight stop. It's bullshit. They then quickly go into consolidation. They don't have a chest cold. The market doesn't have the flu. They are accumulating contracts at another level. They will hit the stops one more time. As I showed you on the previous chart, they threw the spike above to trigger the stops and pick up the pendings on the other leg, the second leg. This action leaves the lower level or higher level traders stunned and stopped out. And then in one bar, they will shift the zone and trap all the retail traders at the lower or higher levels. And that's it. All right, I'm going to back up. Someone said they wanted to write the chart. Actually, a lot of people said, I'm sorry. Let me leave this up. I'll shut up for a minute, and then we'll go back to the other one, okay? I just realized that w what I should do is, why don't you mark down the stuff you want and then go back and listen to the recording and get it? Is that, wouldn't that be better than holding me up? Because everyone's at a different pace. People are writing. I think that is better, right? I always remember it's about halfway through the first day. Yep, make a note that, hey, I want to see the section that was at 
9.50 p.m. and then go back and move up to that timeline. Okay? Yeah. I think everyone's agreeing that I can just get through the slides and flow the, flow the recordings and then you go back. Okay, sorry. All right. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You have the age and range, right? R equals range, 51.4 pips. The ideal age and range is 50 pips or less. The 50 pips or less allows you to see the stop hunts clearly. The stop hunts come in 25 to 50 pips below the box and above the box. Ah, now it makes sense what this is. Here's the 25 marker. Here's the 50 marker. The shadow box highlights the Brinks trade setups. Is it always going to fire in the Brinks trade box? No. But you have to have a deeper understanding of what's going on. Okay, so let's walk through this chart. You have consolidation, right? You have a pin to the low right here. Maybe they picked up some pendings. I don't know what happened here, but here's what goes on. Towards the end of the session, before the start, they shifted the zone away from higher level holders in here. But they stayed in consolidation. Do you see that? Your job is to be smarter than a piece of blue ribbon that paints on a chart. Your job is to reevaluate or reconsolidate the zone and realize they have not made a very aggressive move yet. When you reevaluate the consolidation, you then have your three vector pushes with a nice hammer to the low. Notice how they went past the blue tracer into the stop hunt zone, even spiked through it, but they issued a hammer right here, just outside. Ah, that was bad just outside the shadow box session beginning the timings were off by a, a few bars big deal you know better they quickly pull back go into consolidation to collect positions validate the short orders okay now notice something crazy this candle comes all the way back to the low of the day just enough to pick up anybody that was in here, anybody that got it in here, and that was right. Because of the size of this candle, this would be a pass entry for our group because they shifted the zone. If you didn't get your entry in here, you when they shift the zone, it's too late. I don't want you chasing it. Why? Think about the size of your stop loss. The appropriate stop loss goes below the low of the day. But Steve, it runs perfect. Of course it did. You could see it in hindsight. Of course it did. But how do you know they're not going to come back for, the, for another pass? You don't know that. The stop loss goes where it goes. I can't help it. I'm going to talk about it. Jose doesn't know me. He asked where I got in. Jose, I got in right there, buddy. I know people are saying thought so. I'm kidding, man. I wish I was that good. All right, look. Because of the size of the shift of the zone, that's a note, that's a pass. But if you saw the hammer issue just outside the shadow box in the stop hunt region, you could have taken the trade anywhere in here. Stop loss goes below the low. That is a granny entry. Okay, now, the low should hold for 30 to 90 minutes. It's safe to enter. If you have all the other elements in line, they issue a hammer just outside the shadow in the stop hunt zone. It happens to be laying on the four-hour timeline, which is the blueberry. We'll talk about it. They hit their three vector candles on a reconsolidation of the zone. Right? You extended the blue box. You know better, man. That's consolidation. There's three vectors to the low, vector candles to the low. They ended on a hammer, pulled back. 
This is an outside bar. I don't care if it has a pin. I don't care where it closes. This bar is an outside. Man, I'm so close to the edge. I keep changing the slide. I'm very sorry. This this slide right here, this is an outside bar. How could that be an outside bar? Because it forms the low of the day, and the consolidation is off of it. It's inside. The consolidation is inside the low of the day formation. That's an outside bar. Okay? When market makers trade inside this spike to the low bar, that's a clue for you that the low is forming. Because the spike here forms the low of the day. The consolidation validates that you are at the LOD. The fact that they spiked past the light blue tracer validates you are at the LOD. The fact that they spiked the four hour EMA validates you are at the low of the day. The fact that you're in the shadow box and they spike past the shadow box and came back, validate you're at the LOD. Those are the clues to the puzzle you got to put together. We like to wait for the second pass, but you got a lot of opportunity in here. This candle comes back to bust your chops a little bit, may or may not get you. Not a big deal. Don't worry about it. There'll be another setup just like it tomorrow, I promise, and that candle won't be so big. Okay? See it? All right, it's 10. Let's take a five-minute break. We're going to go into the count, and we will end here tonight after this lesson. The count discusses the levels. All right, so let me get my little seven-minute stopwatch up. Someone asked where I got that from. It's uh, like stopwatch.com or something. It's uh, www.online-stopwatch.com. Okay, everybody back? Good. All right, hear me? All that stuff? All right, some of you are asking about the stuff on the charts. Robert, you're not the only one. Don't worry about that stuff right now. I'm going to break it all down for you. What I want to do is I want to strip away the concepts that you have about the market right now, and I want you to look at the big picture of what these guys are up to. Don't worry about a box, a shadow. I'm going to cover all that shit. It's on there. I know it's in my charts because that's the templates that I took the pictures off of. Just open your mind to what's going on, okay? And I'm going to tell you what the box is, what the arrows are, what the average. I'm going to tell you all that stuff. Just right now, I want you to grasp the concept, okay? All right, so let's get going. I didn't see any questions other than that that I need to address right now. We'll take some questions at the end when I give you your homework, okay? The count. The third most important element of the system is the levels or the count to know where you are in the cycle. Right? You need to look, walk up to a chart and go, okay, midweek reversal, W is anchored in, second session, W, V, V, M, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, reverse. That's why you don't need to spend days and hours doing technical analysis. When you become proficient and can identify the midweek reversal or the peak formation anchor points of the cycle, you'll be quickly able to identify the technicals on the market maker side of the market, not on the where the average crossed over, what part of the cycle am I at, is that support and resistance from October 1905, will that hold? Understand? I said this in my presentation on the sales side of the business, that you don't got to spend hours and hours trying to analyze the technicals. You analyze a chart over three to five days, identify the anchor point, start of the cycle, and you know what to expect on every pair at any given time. Because the market makers have their own cycle and their own way of handling things. You now know how to handle that. Well, you're getting there, or I'm getting you there. We'll figure it out, okay? All right. The cycle, as I said earlier, is based on trader psychology. Really, it's based on human psychology. Fear, greed, and inexperience are used to prey upon the traders. The newbies that don't know anything, fear that you're missing the move, greed that you're going to maximize your gain, those are the emotions that everybody feels in this business. 
as I drew the pattern for you earlier, there are intraday counts and counts over several days, the weekly cycle. They are all there to trap the traders and grab your hard-earned equity. I've seen people write this a couple of times to me in chat. Oh, Elliott Wave, blah, blah, blah. No. Do not associate this with Elliott Wave or any other indicator. Market makers form zones or levels to trap the traders, book their profits, and hit the stops. Sometimes it's like a joke. You can see it like stairs. It's so easy. Sometimes it's not so easy. Understand that at level one and level three, the aggressive moves are seen. Why? They just made a huge run. They snagged the traders. Some amount of money is stuck. They want to hit the stops in both directions, collect up the contracts, and then trap another fresh batch of traders the other way. The M&Ws form at these levels. Okay? There are three levels of correction or rise over three days. Could it be two and a half days? Yes. There are also three levels intraday, the three bursts. If you know where you are in the cycle, it's easy to pick your directional bias and take your trades. The first level of the correction in this example is driven by the market maker. You will see the fast moves on light volume. You can't tell volume, by the way. You just know by the move. The guys that trade the breakouts with Craig and understand this stuff, think for a minute. Even if you haven't traded with Craig, just think for a minute. Open your mind for a second. Ever seen a candle spike really fast? In a textbook, that is written as momentum. But what's really going on is the market maker is flashing the pair with as little money as humanly possible to get it to move or spike. And other times, you've seen the breakout slow and steady, a smooth run. The slow and steady move is the real directional move by the market maker. So the first level of correction is created with a flash into a pair. He might do it on a cross, he might do it with the cross, whatever. To save money, I'll talk about that. The second level of the correction is market driven in absence of the market maker in absence of the market maker. Why? He wants to see where the retail traders will push it. So what happens is this. He creates a stop hunt high spike, pulls back, hits the second leg again, starts the direction and steps aside. He wants to see what the traders will do going into level two. Will they buy? Will they sell? How will they, how will they set the straddle? How, how will the contracts or the money be set up? The third level of the correction, when you get to level three, is again picked up by the market maker. He puts the brakes on, so that's far enough today. He'll trigger the stops again, make the push, validate the ABCD lightning bolt, and create more panic in the market. So understand, level one and level three, since they are driven by the market maker, will be more aggressive. Those are the moves that have been scaring you out of good trades because you didn't understand that he was doing it to you. During the levels... Market makers will buy from the traders to create their positions with the heaviest volume being seen at level three. At level three, they're all in. They got to reverse and collect their equity back. Understand? When the signal appears, Simply buy or sell third level rises and third level corrections against the retail traders 
lights out. If you can count to three, profit will be realized in these trades. It's a, it's a joke oversimplification. Okay? Is there sound issues? No? Okay, cool. Okay, now, this is going to piss you off. It should. In addition to each of the three levels, there is a corresponding level of consolidation. Level one, level one consolidation. Level two, level two consolidation. Most of the time, when this is going on, the stops are triggered in both directions before the next level is started. The zones create 30, 20 to 30 pip swings be visible on the chart. Market makers are trying to hit the stops both ways to make easy work of the next level. They're trying to take the buying or selling pressure off from the market. So they slap it both ways. That is where, if you guys ever seen those little, they call them pennants. I hate that terminology because I don't like any of that stuff. It's garbage. But look. You have the move, right? They go down, they consolidate. Then what happens is it creates like a, a little wedge right in there, right? Then they break for the next level. Then they go like this. Forms another wedge, right? Then they do it again. Now you're going to notice the pin start to the downside. Then they'll reverse. One, two, three. Sorry about your luck. Okay, let me clean the chart bag up. Okay, so now write this down and think for a minute. Market maker jumps in, 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning, 3.30, 3.45, ideal, right? He jumps in. He creates the move, starts the panic. He shows you breakout vector candles the wrong way. He's showing you something, get the retail guys to bite. Retail guys bite the wrong way, he's got them. He pulls back quickly off of the high. He goes at it again one more time to validate, hit the stops. He then shifts away from that, 25 to 50 pips in the first level and goes into consolidation. He then swings both ways. He may come back towards the high of the day. That move, coming out of level one consolidation, back towards the high, back towards the low, scares you out of a good trade. Scaring you out of a good trade is his job to make sure you don't actually make any money when you're right. Each zone of consolidation creates a little tiny wedge, if you will, on the chart. The pins are issued in both directions, and then the next level drop arises seen. He stands aside during that cycle, cycle two. Level two, uh, level two uh, forming, sees how the orders are set, and then he says, okay, that's enough, and he reels it back in. He then switches the pins against the move. So if the cycle is down, the pins will start going to the downside at level three. You'll see the spike candles, more aggressive moves will be seen towards the downside. If price is rising in level three is shown, the spikes will turn to the top side. Why? He's trying to trap the traders before he reverses. Okay? Think. All right, let's have a look. Get my little pen. This is classified, by the way. I could show it to you, but then I have to kill you at the end of the seminar. All right, look. Three hits to the high. Didn't just this exactly just happen? This slide's like two years old, man. Remember, I told you we pulled the curtain out from behind Oz. It's the same shit every single day, day in and day out. Three hits to the high. Stop hunt at London Open. Hammer at three forty-five and nine forty-five. That's all they got. It's the same move over and over. Once you can identify it, you own them. Okay? So now, 
Market maker starts the stop hunt, creates the panic. You reevaluate your, your consolidation zone. He goes vector to the high on you. He doesn't take out the previous high. Second leg M, bam. Peak formation is formed. You enter somewhere in here, you got about an hour to decide. Level one correction. Pins down, pins up. I see what you mean about the color. Let me change it. Let me find something pretty like a yellow. Okay. Wow, it erased it. Sorry. I don't know if that's any better. Correction, right? We enter in here. Pins up, pins down, forms kind of a little pullback wedge, right? Level two of the correction is smaller and weaker. But again, market makers hit the pins on both sides before the next level is commenced. Now something kind of funny happens. He goes into level three correction. He's got vector to the low in here. Three pushes down to finish out the level, right? Funny how I only see pins on the bottom now. Here and here and here. Those candles were all the way down at one time. He's working the low. Now we know we've had on average a 50 pip drop per level. So we're at ADR, 150 pips. At 150 pips ADR, he starts issuing a pin at the bottom of the candle. The pin is a wick on the candle, whoever's asking. He starts issuing pins at the bottom. Do you notice that there's no pins on the top of these candles? Not necessary. I'm trying to trap short holders. So I push the market down, push the market down, bam, snatch it away. Gotcha. I, I hang around for 45 minutes, push the market down, push the market down, bam, gotcha. Hang around for an hour, push the market down, push the market down, bam, gotcha. The third confirmation doesn't happen very often, but I like this chart because there was three confirmations here. And then three mini confirmations. I can't draw it down there. It'll change the slide. Sorry. And three mini confirmations. One, two, three. Do you see how three plays into the psychology almost always on these charts? Three hits to the high, three levels of drop, vector three, three pushes to the low, three pushes to the high, three pins to the low. In the retail world, that gets you to chase the wrong setups. In our world, it gets you to identify his behavior and beat him. Understand that this happens all the time in the market, in every market. You just have to identify it in real time, and the journey starts tonight. Okay, pretty cool stuff. I, I'm a little excited. I don't know. I really like this stuff. Okay, I can't change the slide. It jammed. There we go. All right. Now, here you are again. Variation on the theme. Time. Consolidation. One, two, three to the high to end the session. Vector. Happen to have a little news in here. Market makers hit the stops in both directions with a spike. That trade's still good. How do I know? The high was not taken out. The high happened to hold. You have your peak formation high. You have your high of the day, U.S. session, and you also have your peak formation high of the week. What do I expect tomorrow? I expect stop, hunt, rise, drop. Why? Because I got the cycle now. I nailed it. It's anchored. Okay? Notice something kind of crazy in here, too. There's three vectors in here on the downside. And then notice something else in here. There's three little baby vectors in there. And then you come back in the second leg. Form the W out and reverse. This is not a very good counter, remember? Okay. Consolidation. Stop hunt high. This one happens to be, I'm going to write this initials down. You're going to say, what the hell? That's a stop, hunt, high, hold the mayo. It's not a sandwich. It's a trade. 
stop hunt high hold the mayo is simply market makers came out of the box out of the consolidation they used the 200 moving average as the trigger which offered resistance at the perfect timing at the stop hunt you know that this trade is a is a drop how do you know because you already got your high of the week high of the day peak formation stop hunt high hold the mayo the stop hunt trigger bars are held in place by the mayonnaise this is also two pins to the mayonnaise okay you have your drop this is an example of where you have one level of move and then you have two and three the next day then what do you have just outside the red box they issue a hammer to trigger the stops of the continued or the people that got it right long second leg right they come in session changeover they need to hit it one more time to get the stops. That's your entry. Back in the consolidation, end the day. They end the day always how they start the day. Okay? Away from the traders that are jammed up down here, they want to stick them. Okay? Okay, good stuff. All right. The peak formation started at the end of the week on Friday in this example. Stop hunt high, sell. They push down. See the low? That blue tracer lets me know that yesterday the price came in like this. When they go back to that, I got it. Second leg, same level, failed to break. Second leg, same level, failed to break. That's a big, fat W staring at you. That's good for about, I don't know, four or 500 pips, 300 pips. The retracement's 140. That's a 300 pip move. Continuation from Friday. Notice how they caught the retailers with the gap right there. We don't fall for that crap. We don't care. We got peak formation low. PFL. Peak formation low. That looks like an E. Sorry. Here, let me see if I can do that. Peak formation low. Sunday going into Monday. There's your gap. Readjust your consolidation for the breakout guys. Readjust your market maker spread. There's your initial HOD initial low in here readjust because they gapped and shifted away they gapped and shifted away they don't want anybody to have a profit they got them stuck now they come back London open W formation second leg happens to be railroad tracks straight rise do not hold over the weekend I'm not telling you to hold over the weekend I'm showing you how to analyze the chart going into Monday I see peak formation Friday I know where I'm at now coming out, I expect straight away. Why straight away? They have to aggressively get the hell out of here because they jammed all these traders. Right? They got to get the hell out of that range because they want to stop everybody out and get them into margin trouble because they know who's in trouble. They have their list from the plugins. They got a hundred million dollars in margin trouble. If I clean that out, I'll put that in my pocket. I'm a market maker. So that's where the aggressive break trade comes. This also, by the way, happens to be the day that breakout traders make money. Second day of the cycle. Okay? In consolidation, what do you expect? One more night. Okay, what's the cycle? W, V1, V2, M. That's the cycle, right? Anchor point, peak formation low. Day two, day three, reverse. Here you go. Day one rise. Consolidate back into consolidation. Stop hunt low. Rise. All of a sudden, man, uh, the pins turn to the top side. Three levels of rise built into there. They come back just outside the U.S. Open. Issue railroad tracks. Retrace 140 pips in case you were bored. 
they don't have unlimited equity, they must grab it back at some point in the cycle. Now, we'll talk about the continuation, but they can make a W and continue on the uptrend over here. They book a profit, get back into direction. Why? They have longer term goals that they have to be cognizant of. If, and if you think about this, if they went three days up, three days down, the market would never go anywhere. It would sit there sideways, right? And surely you'd figure it out. I know Craig would because he almost figured this out. Now, if you notice that trade, 150 pip retracement, two pins to the mayonnaise. If they put the second leg in at the mayonnaise, there's your stop on low, hold the mayo at the U.S. session in the red box. There's your retracement trade. These things repeat over and over and over again, and you're going to see them in the charts. And once you see them, you can't unsee them. They're in there. Okay? Good stuff. Hang in there. I know you guys are getting tired. A few more minutes, 10.30-ish. I don't want to beat you up too long. Okay. Now, here's the thing that's going to piss you off. This pisses me off. You know your support and resistance bullshit stuff you've been drawing on the chart? It's a hoax. It's a hoax. The consolidation zones created during these moves intraday create false support and resistance level that the market maker puts that's visible on the chart. Understand what I just said. The consolidation zones that he makes on the chart creates false support and resistance because he knows all the retail traders draw the lines on this shit. So right now, here's the pattern, right? Think for a minute. I drew this for you, I showed you this. I push down, I show you this. I push down, I show you this, right? This crap right here ensures that some retail guy is going to draw a line through it and say that's support from February or August 2nd, 11, and that should hold sometime in the future. He creates those zones to make you draw the lines. Hey, Joe, nice to see you. Uh, I'll get to you. I miss your coffee, buddy. Thanks for the nice email yesterday, by the way, to us and Compass. Okay, now, to sum this up a little bit. Level 1 and level 3 aggressive moves will be seen. Market makers must book a profit and do so at level 1 and 3. Level 1 can be previous level 3. Three levels of rise, they go into stop hunt, hit stops high, drop. That's your level 1, your new peak formation. Level 3 becomes the reversal and starts level one. I know it's confusing, but think for a minute. If I have a trade that goes down three levels, one, two, three, hit the stops one more time and rise, this becomes the new, the new direction, right? Level three has now become level one, two, and three. Understand? If they're going to continue... If they're going to continue the reversal, or they're going to continue the uptrend after they make the retracement, this becomes the reset and you start the count over. We'll talk about this stuff. I just want to expose you to it. Okay? Let me flick the chart and get rid of my drawing and come back. Okay, so now, something kind of interesting. The head and shoulders pattern develops in level three most often. Think about what the head and shoulders pattern is. Hit the high, pull back. Hit the stops, pull back. Hit the stops one more time. Sorry about your luck. Just kidding. Shoulder, head, shoulder. The difference is between us and everybody else in the retail world, they want you to take that pattern at the neckline. It's over at the neckline. I want you to learn to grab it here or here. Okay? I'm going to talk about it more. Don't worry. 
Here's what I mean. Three levels of drop going into the next day. Right? Here's the M formation. Nice drop. Consolidation. False support and resistance on the chart. False support and resistance on the chart. This lines up with some crap you'll project down here when you feel good. They come in, spike the low. Asian session. Shoulder. They pull back aggressively. They come in, spike past the low to pick up the pendings. Breakout guys. Snatch the market away from you. Hit the stops of anybody that was correct in this aggregate. Anybody that didn't move to break even, anybody that went to break even gets scratched out on the second pass. Either one of these is an acceptable shoulder here or here, okay? Railroad tracks going into the session. But isn't the head and shoulder pattern? Let me toggle this. Isn't the head and shoulder pattern a variation on a W? Ends on an M? Think. Forget about it. Amputate this guy's shoulder. We don't need it. Get rid of it. There's your spike to the low. Second pass. W formation. Take. You're in. Right here. Bam. The third try coming back doesn't take out either one of these levels. Trade is still good. Okay? So, this behavior exhibits level three. Do not enter the trade after the dang neckline's broken. You're missing the whole thing. The move is in here or in here. Okay? Again, there you go. Level three behavior. Why? Because what they do is they're showing you a downtrend, right? Averages are separated. The 50s past the 200. Water is below the mayonnaise. The 50 EMA is trading below the jar of mayonnaise, the mayonnaise, white, okay? Now, that's a retail trader's downtrend. What do you do as a retail trader? Buy the rallies, buy the rallies. I'm sorry, sell the rallies in the downtrend. Sell here, sell here, right? But what's really happened is they've made the aggressive move towards level three, issued a hammer, formed the low, come back, spike to that low, but don't take it out, there's your proper entry on the head and shoulders. And there's your straight run up. Do not go against the market maker setup. Trade in line with him. Okay, you can trade both ways on level three, but that's more advanced. I'll talk about it later. I want you just to get the basic concepts right now. The bias should be changed from a downtrend after three levels of drop. Head and shoulders is seen. But look, just think about what this is. Draw this box right here. Took it out for you to see it. Hey, hold on, let me start over. Draw the box right here, okay? At the session open, they pick up the breakout guys, spike them out long, spike them low short, break plus a close, you enter here short. Gotcha, just kidding. Our group enters here. Okay? And in three bars, you're up big. Because this is usually a 50 pip channel, 50 pip Tokyo channel, right? They already, one bar is shifted off the low, 50. This next bar is about 50 right here. Then they chop around a little bit, hit it again, 50. There's your ADR. You understand? Okay. Never trade against the peak formation out of level one consolidation. That's the day the breakout traders are rewarded. The straightaway develops here most often. Market makers have gotten what they need at the head and shoulders, the aggressive moves, and the traders are jammed going into tomorrow. Trapped. They will not come back to the level because if they do, it releases all that money back into their accounts of the traders. Understand? By repeating back towards the level, they allow the traders to click out at plus one, plus five, minus two, minus three. They, it's not what they're not in the business of letting people out. They're in the business of jamming people. So understanding that. 
keeps you in the right directional bias. W V V M M A A W. Okay, my throat's starting to hurt. Don't confuse the three swipes at the stop loss, the vector three candles. Don't confuse the three pushes or pulses to the stop loss levels with the three levels of rise or correction. Some people are like, I understand. The three levels of or three swipes at the stops are like this. They're tight and they're bursts. And I'm going to cover that tomorrow. But then you have the three levels of move of approximately 50 pips each, depending on the pair. Australians like 35 pips each. Okay? Whitney, you know this stuff. I don't understand what you're asking me. Okay, now, we're going to end on this next couple of slides. Once you understand how the market is structured, there's only four trades that you should be looking for. These trades are 90% accurate and will not fail. I know publicly I can't say that because people think I'm absolutely insane. But I promise you when you delve into the forum and start looking around at the family, you're going to see Carr, Kim, Granny, Scott, Alan Black, uh, Rick. Their numbers are sick. Dave McCoy now, Zen and Diane. Seven out of eight for the week, five out of five, four out of five for the week with a net profit of ten grand. This numbers are unheard of in this business because people are following the basic retail technicals and they're scared when I say that shit. They think I'm crazy. Well, I'm not crazy. I revealed it today. Okay, so now, mastering the handful of setups that I'm going to teach you in here will ensure your success rate. Tommy just posted he was 87.5% for his first week. Fantastic. These setups are going to ensure your success and produce returns and win, rate, win rates that are unprecedented in this crazy business. I promise you that. Okay, here's the trades. Stop hunt high M formation. Stop hunt low W formation. Straight away rise, straight away drop. The cycle. That's it. Too simple, right? You need some like dots on there and shit. You need some BBs, MACDs. What the hell? It's too easy. If you take all the crap off your chart that I put on there for you, by the way, and just look at the price action, what they're doing, you're going to start to see the drawings that I've drawn for you. I talk about that stupid picture that was out. I don't know. I think I was in my 20s. It was a long time ago. You know, there was like flying saucers and dinosaurs and there's a bunch of dots. And you stare at it, you can't see shit. You're like, what the hell is that stupid dot painting somebody made? Something happens after you blink looking at it for a few minutes. You blink, and all of a sudden the picture opens up, and you can see flying saucers, dinosaurs, orange cows, green stars, blue clovers. I don't know what the hell's in those pictures. I never could do that, by the way. That's how I want you to look at a chart now. I want you to look at a chart with a different eye, a different set of beliefs and understandings. And I want you to blink, and all of a sudden you see the M's, the W's, the flying saucer market makers, the dinosaurs eating your stops. Understand, when you look at it with what I'm showing you, and it clicks, it's game over for you in your trading business. You own it. I don't know how long it's going to take you to look inside the 3D art and for it to change. Everyone's different. I still can't see 3D art. I don't want that to happen to you. I want you to be the starfish that I threw back. I want you be, to be the person that gets this and has success in your life. You all deserve it. Okay, it's 1043. I'm going to end here. It's a good spot. I'm sorry if you're tired. I went a little longer than I like to go. I usually try to break around 10.30. Homework for tomorrow, my friends. You didn't want to hear it, but here it is. I want you to go back 
and I want you to mark the charts. I want you to do Euro USD and GBP USD. And I want you to write on the chart everything I taught you today. You new guys, I mean, new guys do it. Old guys don't do it because it's gonna. I'm gonna be slammed. I will look at all the emails tonight or tomorrow before class. Let me get a little white piece of paper over here. Let's see. Uh, let's see. White screen, screen, white. Okay. Here we go. I need my pen. Euro. USD. GBP. USD. Go back as far as you want. I don't care. Go back a month. Go back two months. Whatever. Okay, now, I want you to label everything that I talked about on the chart. I don't know if I spell that right. All right, let me review for you because you're probably like, what the hell did you talk about? I'm confused. All right, I want you to label. I'm going to make a little list. Vector candles. Three swipes at the high or low. W's, M's, three levels of rise, three levels of fall. I want you to label end the day in consolidation. I basically want you to find this on every chart as you can. One, two, three to the high, pull back, hit it again. One, two, three, W, reverse, end the day. I want you to label this. I want you to note the pins, the timings, the hammers. Orange hearts, blue stars. I want you to label everything I talked about for the last four hours. Okay? Remember my email address? It's in the beginning of the slide. Steve at MMMForex.com. I'm going to take, I'm going to go through as many as I can. It's going to be a lot, but I'm going to get through them. I always do, I promise. And I'm going to take some of two or three of the outstanding ones, and I'm going to post them tomorrow for our review. We'll talk about it at the opening of the session. Okay. Any questions pertaining to today's information and homework that I can help with right now? Zen and Kim have been answering and typing in there, helping out with the questions. That's fine. Nice to see you, Lou. Can I type my email address? I can't type it because it won't type on the screen, but I can try to write it. Let's see. It's my name, Steve. Wait, let me toggle this and clean it up. Start over. All right, shit, it won't toggle. All right, S-T-E-V. See, you should have wrote that down. I told you to take notes. Steve at M-M-M-4-X, F-O-R-E-X dot com. I have another email address coming. I'm just too lazy to set it up on my Outlook. Sorry. Take a snapshot. Use Jing. You screen capture tool. Lou, don't do it, man. Don't send me any charts, buddy. Okay, look. All the new guys. New guys only. Take a screenshot of your chart. Mark it up. Use paint. Take a, a screenshot of the chart. Use paint. Mark it up. Vector candles. Breakouts of the box. Stop, hunt, low. Hey, Lauren. How you doing? Stop on low, stop on high, three-level drop, reverse pins, mini consolidation zones within the range, within the end of each drop, all the stuff I just talked about. I want to see if you learned anything or you just sat here like a vegetable for four hours, five hours, sorry. Okay? Kelly, thank you. Lou, thanks. You're a ball buster. 15-minute chart. Yes, Whitney. Everett, thank you. Thank you, Vade. I'm glad you're here. Ed, thanks. Nice to see you, buddy. Thanks, David. Nice swing trading there, buddy. I've seen him in the forum. Great. Thank you, guys. This is good stuff, man. I, I love teaching it as much as I hope you love learning it. It's awesome. Peter, how you doing? Bruno. Tony T. from Florida, hope you're doing okay. Subio, nice to see you, buddy. Quit smoking, man. I'm going to quit Diet Coke, you quit smoking.
Joe, nice to see you, buddy. I'm out of chocolate, and I'm running low on coffee. Thanks, guys. Thank you, John. Thanks, everybody. All right, listen, I'm going to end it here. Have a great night. I'll rest my voice. I promise I'll be just as jacked up tomorrow. Leah, nice to see you. Alan. I'll see everybody tomorrow. Listen, get some rest. Don't trade live money unless you're a Subio. He's the only one allowed. Seriously, new guys, don't trade live money. If you're up and you want to look at the market, open a chart, take all the shit off of there, and watch. just watch them work. Open your mind and watch them work. Don't put any money on the line because it'll mess up your mentality. Just watch them work. Okay? I know you guys are going to do it. You don't listen. So anyway, good night. Good night, good night, good night. Kim, nice to see you. Thank you. Okay, good night.